All right, in any case, let's begin. So welcome to the podcast, everyone. This was kind of like a spontaneous thing that we set up here post PDR. So we have Kriparian, Macro Bioboy, Rex Andrex, and me uh, hosting it. Uh, we have a topic list here that I was going to go through real quick. So we're going to start with some quick intro for everyone. Then we're going to talk about the overall impressions uh, about the season four PTR. I guess it's like, you know, what's it's going to be just like the general topic here, but uh, just give like a, a quick, you know, what we think about it. Then we want to talk in detail about itemization and crafting. And then it changes individually to health height, the pit, the new systems, uh, the new bosses. Uh, then maybe a bigger topic for balancing and the philosophies, maybe. And then we're going to close out with season theme guessing and what to do until May 14th. So that's kind of like the <laughs> the, the plan oh, for tonight. To figure it out. Yeah, here's yeah. my magic, baby. I just said yeah. that. <laughs> Pro- probably not much to for for anyone, but yeah. <laughs> we, we don't have to like 100% stick to this. It's just sort of to like, kind of go through it for the audience now that kind of just came in. And uh, yeah, let's begin. So let's have a quick intro. Let's just introduce you guys, uh, yourselves, guys. Uh, let's start with Crip and then Macro and Rex. Okay, so I'm Crip. I play games. One of those games happens to be Diablo 4. Uh, <laughs> for better or worse, I'm still playing it um, because I like making characters and stuff. And uh, the new PTR changes, itemization stuff seems like a good thing so we're here talking about it hello hi i'm macro uh, i play the necromancer in heroes of my magic 3 that's really all that i do um the amount of hours that i have in a single class here is only trumped by the number of hours i had in the warlock in world of warcraft so like i'm f- but yeah that's about it Rex, play games wear a blue hoodie that's it <laughs> okay and oh, then yeah. the- don't you have another one I have, is... I have a few blue, ho- few blue I, hoodies. Perfect. I, I there we go. Realized you almost always wear a blue hoodie, but I didn't realize that's like that's like a Rax fame. You like open your closet and it's like ten blue hoodies. <laughs> that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, I wore a blue hoodie every day for five straight years. <laughs> Some people think it's only one hoodie. It's the same hoodie, <laughs> but that's not true. Hopefully, got a, few, got a few. Got a few. Okay, and a black one. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, and me, I'm Rudy Joe. I'm hosting the podcast. Uh, I also play a lot of Diablo and, well, other RPGs. So that's mostly what I do. I love Rogue. All right, let's jump in. So let's talk about what do you think about Season 4 and the PTR? So I guess like most people have been blasting it a lot. Like I know Macro was there every day, Rex was there every day, I was there. I'm not sure how much Krip has done. Um, I know you I, were blasting it. But... I did what I felt was a sufficient amount to not like ruin the experience of actually playing it in a meaningful manner next season. Okay, so basically, I played for like a day and a half. Yeah, that's a good amount. So I guess he saw all of the, like got, the main changes. I got one piece almost master worked up to just kind of <laughs> see how the thing <laughs> flicks through, basically. All right. Yeah. So I mean, just just shoot it. Like, what do you, what do you have to say about the PTR? Um, So obviously, overall, it's pretty good. Uh, Generally, you know, three plus seasons in, we've kind of learned to manage our expectations from Diablo patches. So with this like mild enthusiasm, I think they did a fantastic job in the PTR. Um, most, Most of the changes kind of follow a pretty good direction. They're still like a little rough around the edges. Like I figured if they're gonna do like an itemization rework, they would like actually do a bit more like they they kind of just took out stats they didn't like rather than coming in with stats that are actually cool or new like like a shield still doesn't have shield stats somehow like there's still no block uh i don't know it's kind of weird to me um but overall i think the the biggest thing was that uh they kind of streamlined defenses so it's not going to be like this mess where they can't make bosses that do meaningful amounts of damage. Now they did that by basically deleting all the defensive stats, but I think I think that will have the biggest effect in the game moving forward. And I think that needed to be done like a year ago, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, in terms of like the tinkering with items and stuff, um, it's all right. Um, there's like some cool stats in there. Um, 
I mean, I also am leaning towards Necro, so I got that as a pretty big part of the PTR experience on the plus side, but I guess we'll probably leave that to a subtopic. Yeah, we can talk about the balancing in more detail, but if you want to mention anything in particular, like a build or something that, you know, suddenly came online on, on the PTR, then sure do that. Um, so I was actually playing like a golem-centric necromancer for several uh, several leagues now, and it's been like pretty good. Um, like it was quite good in in season three. The main reason it wasn't like a very good build is because the reapers weren't summoning corpses. Uh, it got like fixed like twenty patches in to season th like I fixed like a month ago basically. So that was pretty not cool. Uh, because if you're playing a minion necro, that's basically the only way you're realistically getting them. And I also did not really appreciate how they said it. It's like fixed a bug where instead of using the 15% rate, it was using 15% of their lucky hit chance. And I'm like, my my brain is like melting away because I know that minions don't have lucky hit. Basically, that's a that's a fancy way of saying that it didn't work at all. That's that's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they had to like do it that way. So like the noob tard basically reading the patch notes is like, oh yeah, just you know, blizzard fixing bugs here. I don't know. Um, I would I would but, love to yeah. hear macro thoughts on this as well. <laughs> and it's so rough because like because like you know you know Crip has been playing this build for a long time now, and we'll basically come across the same bugs right around the same time, and we'll both just like start screaming it into the void. But like <laughs> sitting there and trying to figure it out, and I'm like, I don't know what you guys did. It's working out like. 10% of its expected output. You get like one corpse every two minutes of gameplay. And then like, oh, we yeah. just added lucky hit chance only to the Reapers. And then it was based off that. And I'm like, that's not how this game works. What do you <laughs> what do you mean that's what you did? Uh, we're running into a lot of that in the PTR too. There's like insane yeah. lucky hit chance issues going on right now. Oh, but hey. that's that's the point of the PTR. Like that's that's kind of why I hope they give this like every single season, honestly. I would put a full week into the PTR three months in every single time if they would let me. Yeah, but the the minion thing has got a, got a pretty good rework. Uh, I think there's still quite a bit to test because, um, like, I know uh, Macro was was running into like minion survivability issues, but he wasn't really spec that much into minion survivability. But again, it's kind of something I don't really want to solve in the PTR. The minion survivability is like better kind of but it was bad before but also we don't have like the season four mechanic and all the seasonal mechanics have some choice between offense and defense and it's going to be more meaningful this time because again we kind of just lost all defenses on gear which is it's great actually um so yeah um i think that's still something to be figured out but i'm expecting the minion build to be uh pretty competitive for damage pretty competitive for clear speed um and the rest you know i'm 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 holding reservations for how it ties into the seasonal mechanic basically but it's pretty exciting to just like you know, play minions and and see them like be really good like like they're really good they're, uh, they're i would argue they are too good once you like fully like, spec into them it's actually kind of crazy yeah like the the boss at the end of the the what is it called the pit it just it's just kind of like a white mob like just walk over it and then the minions hit it and then it's dead right so that's it, it did seem kind of crazy to me as well like I, I didn't know much about minions i just put something together and it already feel, feels kind of crazy but yeah i guess we'll see how it will actually play out yeah so for me i look at i look at it um on kind of like like a, a basic level and one thing for me that was surprising, and again, maybe this is setting the bar very low, but the PTR just worked. I logged in, it didn't crash, I boosted to 100 and I could test things. Like that for me was already a win that might be setting the bar low, but I was happy that every single day there weren't hours and hours of downtime and these huge disconnects. So I played Minion, Minion Echo for three straight days, testing a bunch of things as well. I wasn't doing like end game stuff like uh, Crip and Macro were doing. And then it was very funny. On the very last day, Woody asked me to go into Nightmare Dungeons and go into the pit and kill a single elite. Okay, no problem to, to crunch some numbers. I summoned my golem. I have my golem there and I have one skeleton. And I was walking around in the Nightmare Dungeon just trying to get one kill. 
And that's when I realized, and I sent Adam Jackson a little paragraph, and I said, listen, like, there's no doubt about it that minion necros are dominating here, right? They're just dominating. But I would take a massive, massive damage reduction if you would just make them work. And then I tried companion druid, and it was the same problem. Like, the wolves were so dumb. It takes them so long to actually engage, and they're so confused. Like Crip said, if you're fighting one monster, like a boss, and you curse them, and that directs your minions to attack them, okay, then it deletes them instantly. But I found, like, the baseline AI of minions, even though they have improved them, to be still completely unacceptable for the game. And then the I... other thing... Go ahead. Can I ask what golem you used on your minion necro? I was I was trying to simulate hardcore, so I was using the one with thirty percent. Uh, there's one with thirty percent damage Blood reduction, golem, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the problem because the the bone golem has uh, unstoppable for the entire duration of its cooldown, which you can spam, and none of the other minions do. So all the other minions are going to play like shit when there's any CC, but the bone golem won't. Bone golem will be fine. And does the unsolved apply to all the skellies too? No. no, your other, so your like... other minions are hopeless, but the golem answer. Uh, okay, <laughs> there's like there, there, there's there's so much, and I I won't take up all of our time. Um, but the thing that Rax is talking about is something that I like. Obviously, everybody was asking me like, "Hey, make a minion build, make a minion build." I was like, "Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it." And I make the build. And I'm like, "Wow, this is doing really well." I can put golem mastery on all of my gear, and I can masterwork it. So I have like rank twenty golem mastery, and my thing hits for like six billion damage. It's insane. And the rest of the skeletons can't figure out how to walk around a door frame. Or if there's a barrel in the way, they don't know what to do. Or God forbid, I go around a corner in aggro range. They're all just like, what's up, boss? Should we hide here? I'm like, no, why don't you, why don't you go fight them? They're like, no, we're all just going to stand here weird because we can't figure out how to path to the monster. It is, it, it's, it's bananas wild how ineffective their AI is at doing anything. And then when the golem gains unstoppable, your other minions don't. So he runs up, but it's like Thor's hammer coming in that one scene where you click the button, you wait five seconds for it to fly over. And then all your other skeletons are like feared or stuck in like a circle dead or frozen. And they're all just like, don't worry, Gus, we'll be there in a half second. Um, yeah, it's like they're wildly, wildly powerful and their AI is so trash that I, it's going to be really hard to set expectations for the power output versus just getting them to go fight stuff in a hell tide. It's pretty, it's it's very uncomfortable to play the build for me. But so, they're unkillable sorry. and they do a million damage. Yeah, sorry, just to finish it yeah, off Yeah, let's there. just go what Rex says. Yeah, so another problem that I had, so I, I tested all the Nightmare Dungeons because they said that they fixed the dungeons and they fixed the events. I said, okay, everyone's just going to boost to 100. No one's going to actually level up to 70 and test all these. So I guess I'll just do that. I did it with Minion Necro. I got to some of the Nightmare Dungeons where, you know, they have the, like the breakable gates to go to the next area. And I ran into a moment where I was like, wait a minute, I don't have auto attack on my bar. I wasn't running with a curse. How do I tell my minions to break this thing so I can walk forward? I blood misted by it, and then that made them attack the gate. I'm like, Blizzard, I can't even walk through the damn gate. Like, the, I don't know. I think, again, like, again, going back to it, it's more of a baseline for me. I don't really care if minion necro is S tier or garbage tier. Like, the thing that I care about is the AI is so bad. Like, I th that, that's what I would have fixed first. Um... And th that's like the part that I hope gets fixed in the future. The one other thing I wanted to touch on that Kriparian talked about, which I, I noticed in the end game, they removed all like the core defensive stats. So the first thing that I did was I made a frozen orb sorcerer. So I got up to about pit level 80. I'm armor capped, what is that, 16,400 for an eye level 199 monster. So I'm armor capped. I have a life roll on every single piece. I have, uh, you know, all the, all the best or all the reasonable defensive aspects and you know i'm resistance capped i'm over resist capped because i got my incenses and my elixirs and i go into pit level 80 and i can be one shot it and so i'm just so then at that point when it gets to that point i'm wondering like blizzard what would you like me to do and then my chat is spamming rex there's this build from this guy in china that has permanent flame shield just do that or no 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 you gotta do this thing i stacked 90 percent dodge on my sorcerer by doing this crazy thing it's like bro like that that's what defenses have come to so um i agree with crip that 
the defense has hardly ever mattered in the game and they needed to rework and I'm happy for it. But when I got to the end game on like kind of a squishy class of a sorcerer, I, I was just sitting there wondering, Blizzard, what would you like me to do? What input do I need to get give to not get one shotted in pit level 80? And uh, other than doing the ridiculous suggestions from chat, I didn't actually find a good solution by the end of it. It's kind of funny, yeah, actually, be because when I played the Sorg, I felt like I was actually like, cheating because it was like one of the last things that I was playing during the PTR. Like on the last day, I made a frozen orb Sorg and it was like basically by far the easiest <laughs> that I have played. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> so you, like, you, didn't, you didn't get like, one-shotted? Uh, I mean, you can get one-shotted by, for example, the bosses or so, if there's like, you know, the little wave crashing down and you don't have your barrier up or so. But I don't even think that is like a fundamental problem with like Sorg defenses or the lack of defenses in general. Like you can definitely build a character very tanky and it's just like you have to get like into like the right like philosophy now with creating a build if you want to push the pit. It's just how it is, you know, because otherwise I guess if they add a lot more defense again, we would get, get back to the same point where everyone just becomes immortal no matter what and you just face tank all of the boss attacks because they're not actually that frequent. So... I think it's just like how we approach build making in general that we kind of have to adjust a bit. And once I did that, like early on in the PTR, I was also getting one tapped on my rogue all the time. And then a few days later, I adjusted various things in like just the overall build making process. And it, it was improving a lot. And this was also, you know, without uber uniques and all that stuff, right? You're going to get a lot more powerful in the real game if you want to. So Shaker's like ridiculous now. Like, yeah, exactly. One of the like, usable uniques in the game. It's pretty cool. Was always the best. And now it's at least one of the usable ones uh i'd say it was not the best for like uh some necro builds because the well, skill yeah, didn't do anything yeah, yeah. but now the, it i think there's a really good point though so between between racks and woody i kind of had a, a middle of the road uh, experience which basically half the builds that i tried i was like oh, okay cool i'm in like pit 100 this is fine yeah i might get one shot if i'm in too many boss effects but like that's whatever and then i go on to a build that took like slightly more time to get its cc up or slightly more time to output its damage or has a slightly clunkier like base engine to how it works like uh sever necromancer is a great example it takes a long time to ramp up all of its damage then it was impossible for me to survive and i think in the changes that they've made what we're experiencing now is it's not that you build to an intuitive amount of survivability you have to go above and beyond to get to a base level of survivability. And the issue is, is that so like, not antithetical, but it's, it's, it's very different than what it was before. And every time I thought I was building a competent build, I would have to take out like two or three multipliers and add on a DR stat in my glyphs or something. And then it became functional. And my only issue with that is that not every build has to do that. And there's not like a, a reciprocative, um, like amount of power that you gain or speed from it. There are just some builds that will suck more because of it, and there are some builds that are going to be okay with it. And that's where there's like a balance issue, which will be addressed. But that was the experience I was having. It just either could or couldn't live. Yeah, I kind of, that's actually a good point. Like, especially like, you know, how you apply crowd controls and like when you engage a pack in the pit, like, you know, you go through the pit and you walk in, like, immediately, like, as a rogue, you just throw the smoke grenade, the entire pack of CC, if you hit it right, or something like that. And that is actually like a, a really important part of like how you can survive like at least pt100 for example i felt like outside of pt100 like surviving in the game was like okay like you know open world hell tides yeah there's like some dangerous stuff but it's like kind of like fair enough and i think also pt100 is like it's literally the hardest content in the game right in terms of like monster scaling or monster difficulty so i think it's fine that this is like hard to survive or like pit 80 is like pretty close already right and we have to try to get good gear and try to survive it with like, you know, better play and, and like better optimization. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's just like also like a bit of a philosophy shift because current season three, like you go all in on mobility and damage and no one cares about defense. And, you know, in season four, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to go, go all in on defense and then you check how much do you actually need to actually play the game, I guess. Yeah, and I think well, we, like, go ahead, Chris, go ahead. Um, I think uh, it's a bit interesting. I, I kind of want, like, you just kind of kept talking, but uh, I wanted to go over, like, Sork a little bit. Um, see, Sork, it's, it's got, like, the classes set up for you to get Glass Cannon, but Glass Cannon opportunity cost is way higher now that he takes so much more damage that you can't really I, overcome I'm anymore. I out of it, yeah. I spec'd out yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, 
So it's it's pretty interesting. I, I kind of like the defensive changes. It does feel like um, they made the whole armor changes with the old uh, system of defenses where you can just stack them to no end. And now that our armor doesn't reduce elemental, like the, the elemental damage is so much less manageable than before in the pits. Like, yeah, I had high armor on my Necro and the normal hits were still nothing. And then, yeah, you'd take like a poison and it's like, oh no. <laughs> it's like, well, I'll see you guys, right? I'm out. Um, so it, it does feel like maybe they need some kind of like new elemental reduction defense mechanic stat something uh kind of thrown in the mix and in one of the one of the lenses that i was looking through about are the end game defenses as they've tuned it enough is the perspective i was thinking about all the time was hardcore it's like okay i can i'm certain that i can get to whatever maybe pit level 60 and i'm i'm not gonna die then you get to the pit bosses and uh, like Woody said, the Lilith wave can one shot you or, you know, so many mechanics overlap and you don't have a elixir of death evasion, which I'm so glad that they got rid of. It's like, well, okay. Our hardcore players, maybe we're not supposed to get all the way to pit 200, but you know, if I don't go with one of these gimmicks of permanent uh, flame shield or 90% dodge or whatever, I'm going to have to, dodge Lilith waves from pit 60 to pit 200. Like that's that's the only solution. And I didn't make like a fully tanky sorcerer. Like there were more things I could have done specifically with the Paragon tree. And I didn't like go in and test how much it would matter if you went like full defense in the Paragon tree. That might've been enough. But another perspective of it is like how's the casual player going to feel they're not going to know the armor caps they probably can figure out to cap their resistances they're probably not, not going to take a life roll everywhere and i guess yes the season 4 theme could carry pretty hard and give you a ton of defense but yeah it's going to be interesting i think there's going to be a lot of deaths on hardcore a lot oh yeah no just <laughs> the race to 1000 is going to take a month the seasonal mechanics have generally been like you choose if you want damage or defense, and you basically always just choose damage. Uh, but I think that if they offer us a similar, you know, uh, decision making with uh, with their new mechanic, uh, I think a lot of people are going to choose defense, which is pretty interesting. I also think that if you can super stack defense, characters are probably going to forego armor, um, which I think opens up a lot of like. Uh, that slots, I guess. I think the juggernaut aspect is so strong that it pretty much solves armor for you in one aspect. I think it gives you nine and a half thousand armor for one roll, which is hmm. you need 16.4 at pit level 200. So yeah. it was kind of weird, actually, because it was already a pretty strong aspect on life server. And then they, they literally just doubled the value of it. But they also nerfed disobedience. So there's basically just juggernaut and you take that on every single pit build. It's like... <laughs> It's like really yeah. weird. I always wondered if that was a bug and unintentionally just double the value or something. To, to Juggernaut though, so so that's very interesting. Uh, so like, again, because I only play a Necro, there's basically like two options. There's Hard and Bones, which says 25% DR, and then there's Might Aspect, seven seconds of 20 DR. It's the generic one, right? The issue being that most builds can't fit both of them and Juggernaut onto it, uh, especially now that you can add uh, like utility aspects to your pants, which means you can add damage multipliers there finally. But... Uh, I've, basically, if you do the math, with skulls and, and capped res elsewhere, you can still hit armor cap with enough tempered armor rolls on your gear, which allows you to drop Juggernaut to put another DR aspect on, but that's with, like, masterworked and greater affixes on gear. I like that. I think that's good, ultimately, right? Like, the point of theoretically tempering and masterworking is to create builds that are able to accomplish things you otherwise couldn't. But exactly to Rax's point here, it's just, like, if you don't have perfect DR rolls and you didn't realize you need to add two more DR glyphs to your Paragon board, have fun surviving higher pit tier without two, three thousand hours in the game, like worth of knowledge. I don't know. It's like the top end has become harder to get into, which is kind of what like more hardcore or not capital H hardcore, but like try hard players have been asking for. I'm just I'm really afraid that's going to be like the Abattoir Zero where everybody's going to complain that like they can't beat 200 right away and it's going to get nerfed. And then all of it was kind of for nothing. Like, I, I hope we don't have that knee jerk reaction we saw like in Abattoir Zero in that first week, basically. Well, the thing is also like in 
the pit, you don't have to go very far to get everything in the game, right? You only need to hit at least pit tier 41, which is a very low bar. Like, you know, any kind of trash build can do that. Even for, like, more casual players, I think that will be quite achievable. And that will also just make it so we can actually scale up the higher end of the pit, you know, as high as you want almost, you know, to infinity if you want. And it wouldn't matter because any anyone can get anything just at lower efficiency in the, in the lower tiers. So, uh, you know, you're not holding back anyone from accomplishing something. That's never held back the community, like, player base as a whole from complaining that they can't do it, though, right? It's that's, like, <laughs> like that's you what can get whatever say. you want, but I don't get the coolest stuff. And, and like, it's I, I think it's valid, right? Like, I'm, I'm making fun of it, but I think it's valid. I just don't want it to be a knee jerk. That's all I want. I want, like, two months of experiencing it before anything really balance-wise happens to it. Like, I don't want to see anything until the mid-season balance patch bare minimum. And I'd like to get a lot more data before we start being like, oh, well, we need to make, you know, Pit 200 more accessible or whatever, or more approachable, rather. That's kind of my my only fear. I do think there is going to be less of a divide between characters. Like, you know, if they watch a streamer playing something and the streamer is doing, like, double damage than, like, you know, average Joe, then it's kind of whatever. But if the streamer is, like, invincible and average Joe is dying in one hit to everything, then that's that's where Blizzard is going to step in. And I think with the removal of um, all the defensive stats on gear, um, I think defensively the characters are going to be much closer together. So I actually think they will probably leave it alone. Um, like, they have a pretty ambitious patch cycle. And like in the past when they've had like a really large amount of content, there's been a large amount of problems like bugs and stuff. So I'm expecting this next seasonal mechanic to be bugged all hell, and they're probably just going to spend all their time fixing it for the first couple of weeks. So <laughs> I think you got nothing to worry about. I gotta be, I gotta be honest though. I maybe it's because of the magnitude of the patch or some other logistics. I'm surprised that they didn't put the season theme as part of the as part of the testing because you know season nah, that would kill the hype. Yeah, well, I agree I mean, with Crip, the, Yeah. Well, I mean, this goes back into the theoretical, uh, the theoretical argument, though, of if it's going to kill the hype, then do a closed PTR. Mm -hmm. I mean, who says that's not coming? Well, do you wink, know something wink, that wink. I don't? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know anything. I don't like that idea I, I don't, either. I don't, I don't like closed PTR either. I think it's cool if people can log in and just try some of the content that's coming up, but I also don't want them to try all of it. Well... Right. I mean, that would be the ideal situation, but then also we get season one and season three where they don't really work, right? Like we we don't have a good track record here. So yeah, I agree with you. If we can get if we can get the stuff working, I don't know if that's been happening. You just uh, said there we're gonna be fixing season four for three weeks. Yes. <laughs> I think in general Season four theme is most likely going to be like kind of like a smaller scale theme than the other themes anyway. Like it's gotta be. Personally, I don't I don't even care about the season theme at this point. You know, <laughs> like like who cares about the season theme after seeing this PDR really? So I think they're gonna do, do maybe something much more small and kind of like simple than normal. And uh, you know, like maybe they're gonna prepare for like a big better season five theme instead or whatever. So I could actually see that happening. Uh, I know that you know they have the teams working on on, on like the different season themes on different cycles and stuff, but maybe they you know they pulled a few deaths from that team or whatever to work on the patch. I could imagine something like that as well. I unironically said like the the season theme could be I walk up to an old ancient Haradra man and he says, "Do you want fifty percent life or fifty percent damage?" And then I click that and he just says, "Come back if you want to change it." And that could be the end of it. Like I'm I'm just I'm here to play. You know, everybody's been saying, oh, it's finally out of beta. One, I get it. I, I I truly do. But I am just finally excited to play the game with it having enough stuff for the people who have been unhappy playing the game to just be able to enjoy it. And like just to see what our reaction is when everybody's like, OK, I have in-game stuff. I have crafting. Um, depending on what those potions we found in like Helltide Cellars actually do, we have a little bit of juicing. Cool. These were like core ARPG things that were missing. Now let's see how fun Diablo 4, the video game, is. Um, that's that's the only thing that I care about. And you like the leaks. Maybe it's an Iron Wolf thing. Going back to back, having uh, mercenaries, not my favorite, if I'm going to be completely honest. I kind of hope mercenaries never come to the game. But like, sure, why not? A little guy that follows me around and he does damage. 
I really don't care. I'm just here to like play the game now that it's like finally out of beta. What's what's wrong with mercenaries? I come from Diablo 2 and like the best thing you could do with your mercenary in Diablo 2 was make it so that it was untargetable and it no longer dragged aggro from monsters so that they didn't chase it instead of you decreasing your efficiency. I've just like mercenaries are just very unfun in ARPGs for me, but I, I might be on a small hill there by myself. No, I hard agree with that. I really hope they're never coming to D4. <laughs> I loved my mercenary that followed me in season three. It was so powerful and meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop an unpopular take in this channel. I thought the the gauntlet was a really stupid idea, and they went with that. So uh, uh, I think mercenaries is less terrible than a gauntlet. Uh, I I imagine it's absolutely still on the table as a future project. Oh, I imagine too, but I don't yeah, want they're, it. <laughs> they're, they're gonna be there. They're gonna be there. I'm gonna figure it out. It to your exact point. I think one of the biggest headaches with the gauntlet is that uh, monsters actually aggroed onto your little Seneschal and it broke the ability of being able to drag them to where you wanted them to. So it's like, it's, I think some of the issues with the very content that you don't like is because that thing existed in the first place and that we just kind of like tied half of our, you know, total power to it, but had nothing else to do with it. But yeah. No, I just think it's a bad idea to run the same dungeon over and over again to do it five seconds faster every week. It's just, I don't like, but... Like if, if I sent that as a text to a not even a Diablo player, just a random person and asked them, would you find this fun? The answer you're going to get is no. And now some people are going to find it fun because it's like a new test to their character. But I can think of a hundred different tests to a character that are more fun than that. Yeah, the, it, like uh, similar to that, when they announced the gauntlet, first of all, I, I don't think the timing could have possibly been worse. Like I just, I can't voice enough times how much dropping it in the middle of the season was kind of like the death of that whole thing but one question that i always had for myself about the gauntlet is who exactly is the gauntlet for it's for like uh, the th it's for woody it's for the yeah, it's for no. the <laughs> it's for the 30 people in the game that have been playing non-stop for one and a half months that have either acquired or rmt'd all the uber uniques and want to get themselves on a top 10 like it it I, for me it alienated so much of the player base that that being like the big hurrah for uh, a season would have never worked and i thought it, it really didn't okay speaking of someone who's actually played the gauntlets quite a bit I don't really want to do that much more of it, first of all. So, <laughs> oh I've, my god. They made it for Woody, and Woody doesn't even want to do it. <laughs> that needs to be clipped. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I was blasting it going pretty hard for a month, and, uh, you know, pushing the rank one and all that stuff, and it was kind of fun doing that, actually. Abby, and, like, you know, learning the gauntlet, like, learning how to make a path, and it was, like, its own little optimization uh, problem that doesn't exist, really, like, in, in any other games I've played. And for that, for, like, the novelty aspect, it was actually kind of fun. But it's like, yeah, do I want to do that again, like, every week, forever? No. So, you know, this is this is also not something I would really enjoy. There will be some people that do that, probably, but no, not me. And let if me, I had a me... choice for them, you know, to make another competitive system, I would probably choose almost anything else. But I, I also uh, right. kind of like how they try to innovate on something that they already had, which was the challenge on D3. And I gotta say, compared to Challenge Rates on the free, the Gauntlets are a huge step up. Like, they are actually way better in, like, many ways in the design and everything. Because they give you a lot, lot more interesting problems to solve, and you can do it with your own build, and instead of a crappy build that you get predefined and all that. So in that sense, it was kind of cool, but I wish they, you know, if they had asked me, like, you know, nine months ago, what kind of competitive ga game mode do you want? I wouldn't have said Challenge Rifts. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think it's... Uh, even though it might not sound like it, I think it's more fun to figure out the puzzle of a character on the defensive end than the offensive end. And they finally set themselves up to be able to do that. Because, like, I don't know, it's it's not fun to just do, like, 30% more damage. But if you can take 30% less damage, you can play differently. Offensive stuff, it's more fun if you can do, like, 10 times more projectiles or spawn little monsters that blow up or something like that's fun offense but uh being able to scale defense and having that be like the crux of being able to do content is much more fun and interesting so again i i think that will be 
a setup for the game where a lot of different parts suddenly are meaningful, suddenly are challenging. Like if if Blizzard wants to make Nightmare Dungeon 100 challenging again, they can actually do that now. Like, so yeah, it doesn't have to be like Gauntlet or whatever. Uh, let's take one quick second. Let me let me let me let me do my defense of this thing before we walk away from the concept. Because you asked the question, who is this content for? And I pointed at myself. Um, and to and to Woody's exact point, here's 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 a universe that would have been so much better. Season three, leaderboards come out. What are they tied to? Highest pit clears at maximum time. Oh my god, pit's almost impossible to do. We get the pit. This is the stuff that people are much more like acclimated to designing their characters to do then when it's like way too hard and everybody's complaining that's way too hard what do they give us the gauntlet you don't need everything that you need to be able to do the pit and now it's a time it's like a time-based skill thing as opposed to like this one-shot damage reduction fiesta it's a balm for the issues caused by like the difficulty of the pit and i think this timeline looks completely different because i'm very i'm very sorry to say this to everybody here it turns out once you have killed your quintillionth demon because you had enough damage and enough survivability to do it, I would like to be challenged in some way that isn't just, was my gears numbers high enough? And I feel like the gauntlet does accomplish that. The major problem with it being that it was sold as a perfectly seated, everything will be in the same place every single time. So it's a true test of how good are you and how well did you make your build? But it still has RNG elements and literally different monster type spawn and they're worth different amounts of stats and different events happen differently and you can't pull them properly. So like, I agree that Gauntlet coming out when it did was a bad time for Gauntlet to come out. It wasn't enough to revitalize like interest. And on top of that, it wasn't what the majority of people were looking like. But as the uh, contemporary American philosopher, small Spanish girl always says, por que no los dos? Like, I think it's perfectly fine for the game to have content like this and that it does serve at least part of the player base because it turns out there's thousands of people pushing for rank one and trying to get like that that cool art, right? So like there's clearly people who want to do it. It's just when it came out that I would argue was not the best time for it to be introduced to the game. Well, I think actually when season four comes out and a lot of people can actually be turned to the game and see Gwanda for the first time, like literally... Because, you know, now it was like season three, D4 was down bad, like for real. And, you know, like no one really wanted to wait for the Gondor to come out so long. But now that people are actually coming back in season four and try Gondor, there might be like a bit of like a new hype and like a new like theory crafting phase. And, you know, maybe you know, there will be more people enjoying it. But in general, it remains a niche thing, I guess, long term. This is just how it is because of how disconnected it is from the rest of the RPG loop that people expect. So that's just, yeah. My, I, my... I, yeah, I would expect, like, when I look at it from a volume perspective, um, so what Woody said will happen for some people, right? They're playing the gauntlet for the first time, they're trying it, they, they might be engaged with it, they might um, use it as a barometer for how they made a good build and be challenged. But when I think about a, a it from a volume perspective, are they going to have that reaction or are they going to have Crips reaction? They're going to run the gauntlet. And then they're going to be like, all right, okay. Then they're going to spawn back at the door and be like, wait, I do that thing again? I'll just do it again? <laughs> and then they're going to and then they're gonna quit, right? I think that, like, from a volume perspective, that's what's going to happen. And it kind of along the, those same lines, I don't know if Crip agrees with this or not, but so, okay. So Crip says, now that they have made de defenses more interesting now, like building characters more interesting, Blizzard can build difficulty in different areas where they couldn't before. I, I completely agree with you. And I I appreciate like the balance of, you know, building your offense, building your defense. I got a good taste of it in my first uh, POE. What's it called? The gauntlet as well. So it also called the gauntlet and hardcore is really tough. It's like, okay, I got to survive. Um, but again, I thought, I think if we polled most people and we said, which one would you rather have, Timmy? Would you rather have oh, 300 more explosions on your screen or 30% damage reduction so you don't get one-shotted. I think they're going to pick the first one every time. So I don't know if the masses are going to agree that pursuing all of this defense is fun, even though it might be better for the game. I mean, this is why you have, like, you know, That's okay, your weapons have offensive exactly stats. That's what I said, though, because, like, yeah. what I said is 
It's not fun to scale damage just numerically, which is basically how it's often done. But it is more fun yeah. to like have hundred times more projectiles or yeah, yeah, much more explosions. Yeah, it, but, it is certainly fun. But and scaling defenses, it, scaling defenses numerically can and often will result in you playing your character differently, and and that's not the same for damage a lot of the time, unless we're talking about like big time multiples. Yeah, that's that's actually true. It's like what what Crypt says. Like it, I also really like the new itemization problems that we have with the builds, with like defenses mattering more, and also like you know we, we talked about like the gap between top players and like lower players kind of like closing a bit at least on the defensive side, not on the offensive necessarily, but it's defensively you kind of like have like an expected damage intake now, versus previously where you know some guy that knew how to stack four out of four defense on your chest and your pants, they were just facing everything. And well, average Joe wouldn't, and they would just die from like any little lightning projectile or something. So now that yes, there's only so much defense you can stack, yeah, defensive choice first of all matter more. Like the blood golem or your, your glyphs, you know, do you take a defensive glyph? Do you take an offensive glyph? That that actually matters now, and it's actually way cooler that it does. I think compared to before, where it's just like okay, you just solve everything for like two items on your build, and and then you just don't don't think about it, and you face tank everything in the game. All right. Anyway, we can also like move on to the next topic here. We've been talking a lot about, you know, the overall impressions and like, you know, just some random stuff that we had now. So I had like the topic prepared here for itemization and crafting in general. Let's dive deep, dive deep there a little bit on the tempering and the master working. So what do you guys think about that? They desperately don't want me to actually play the game. They want me to play UI simulator and gotcha game. It's it's like it. It's like it's disrespectful and offensive to me to a point of like me being very angry about it most notably like failing on masterwork is literally just a waste of time and obviously there's like ui bugs where you click close and it doesn't work or anything like that but in my mind what i imagine is somebody gets a perfect piece of gear they get the tempers that they want gg then they go to masterwork it they click masterwork four times even though you can't fail but i do have to watch an animation four times then you get to the first crit it doesn't hit what you want you click reset you go again and then you run out of the lower tier materials because you're not running tier 20 pit anymore so now you got to go transmute more, which is clicking open a hundred boxes of freaking obdu site. It's like, it is disrespectful of my time when I'm a living mortal human being and I will die one day. Like that's how bad I feel about it, honestly. <laughs> but would Would you rather do that or farm durial? Oh, I don't want to farm durial either. That was also disrespectful uh -huh. of my time. I want to be killing <laughs> the demons real fast. So yeah. So first of all. Let me say, like, I completely agree with what Macro is saying, and like, that's what all the feedback was. Like, it's it's a huge waste of time. Let me say, I at least understand, like, without testing it, why this, why things like this will happen, because they have teams like the UI team and the animation team. They're coming out with a new crafting system. They say, oh, wouldn't it be so cool? Rather than you just temper and it just appears on your item, if we play this, you know, this three second little animation and people will think it's cool and da 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 da, and then it it changes colors and everyone's gonna love it. And it's it's one of those things that like it would work in theory, and then you log on the PTR and you play for 30 minutes, and you're like, okay, that was cool once, and now I'm just mad about it. So I could understand why initially they would think it was a good idea, but I think once you put it into practice, you need to just let us, uh, like maybe the only time where that makes sense is on master working when you hit like one of the four, and it gives you a huge upgrade, but still I think it takes too long and it needs to be way faster. But um, I could understand in theory why they thought that was a good idea and it just ended up being terrible. I mean, there's many solutions for the UI problem, right? They can make it faster, they make it skippable, they make it so it can do like, you know, plus four at once. That's also something I suggested. Or I don't know, they can just show you the item at all times and the animation together or whatever, right? So there's like many ways around it. And I guess they just have to decide on something and make it, you know, more quality of life and be fine. Anyway, I don't think that's like a huge deal. But I do fully agree with Macro's points. <laughs> okay. So I, I did it very little and I didn't find it that annoying. But the way that it kind of felt like it was like the last layer of character optimization. So they're they're literally going up against Durial farming in my mind. Um 
and yeah, I don't I don't disagree with what, with what you guys are saying, but I would also uh, do pit farming than durial farming. So the like the system itself, like the master working, like regardless of how we feel about like resource sink cost and the gold conversion sink cost and all of that, I think I think those are like ultimately exactly like you said, Rex. It's like okay, it was cool. I looked at it. I don't want to see it again. We'll trim it down. We'll make it a bit sleeker. The overall system itself, I think, is very good. Obviously, Diablo Four needed crafting, like so bad by the like actual release of the game, and that's what we've effectively gotten. And some of the things that you can do with your builds because you can masterwork, crit chance up to 50%, and then you don't need it in your skill tree, or cooldown reduction to this level, or enough to crepify size here so you can hit it. Like, it's very, very cool. I'm so excited that it's in the game. And yes, I would much rather be running the pit for the rest of my life than ever go back into a Durial, uh, which is kind of begs the question, why are we still going to Durial? But like, that's a whole other thing. Uh, and I don't... I don't have Just a good answer. Yeah, way better. Go, yeah. <laughs> but like, I think it's incredibly cool. I, I think it's very smart. It's obviously like not that robust, right? It's not like we have like 18 different materials that like are all tradable and stuff like that. We're not getting POE levels of economy here. But I like that it's like kind of a bite size. You go do a pit, you get enough materials to roll a couple times, you see what happens. And for the casual player, I think it's like nearly perfect other than the time waste aspect of like, why don't lower tier materials drop in the higher tier pit? And when I'm only going to be running higher tier pit, I'm never going to go back and run like a tier 40. So I have to use the alchemist, which is just like another gold sink. That part still just feels like, why are we, you chose this and then you're making me pay for it. And I don't know why. But the thing itself is cool. So here's, here's an interesting philosophical question that came up in my stream multiple times. It'd be interesting to hear if you guys have a strong opinion um, one way or another. So when you get higher level master working, you have the chance to fail, right? A lot of people voiced very strongly that they would rather just, you know, I'm sure you guys all understand, can just convert it into a math equation, remove the opportunity to fail, and just build in, you know, the chances to fail all the way up to 12 in mathematically to the an increased cost per level. And people were telling me this every single day. It was on the forums. And first of all, I didn't really... I didn't really understand the whole point because it's just math one way or the other. You're getting the same result. But people were saying that avoiding the failing is what made them feel better. They could go farm for their set amount and guarantee the upgrade. I'm in, very interested to hear. What do you guys think about that change that they were asking for? Crip seems very fond of this change. Well, personally, so, so people, just, okay. just the chance people to not fail, fail but... right? Yeah, people love Gamba, and gaming companies know that people get hooked on Gamba. So Gamba system will always, always win out. If if it's not some game dev, there's like some accountant that's like calculating average game time spent on like Diablo players. That's gonna overrule any kind of like dev decision on it. I believe there's like no shot that's happening. It like, and and. Honestly, I don't even mind that much. I I get I get the idea of like consistent farming, but like even even in like a team game, you're going to have like a group of five players, one of them gets it, like he gets a good streak on the first run. The other guys, "Oh man, I got now I got to farm harder to catch up." Right? So there's even more than like the personal aspect of it. Like there's there's no shot that system's going away. It's it's gamble all the way, not for this mechanic, for all of them moving forward. My my only pushback, and, and, and like you're right, like there's no question, it's how insidious that reality is, because this thing exists in mobile games to sell you glyphs of no fail, like the fact that I have to watch the animation, it, st it starts going, which means I failed, so now Macro I feel is really bad. upset about these animations, man. And then you feel very bad, upset. and then it's like, hey, next time you'll have a forty percent chance to succeed. And I'm like, am I a baby? What are you do? Like, what what are you doing this to me for? And then you fail eight more times, and then you get to the last crit. You did it, and it didn't hit the affix that you wanted, and you reset. Like, it all like all of it is clearly gambling. It's gambling from the first crit that you land. Why does every part of it have to be gambling? Like, why does every part of it have to be the slot machine? Mm. Even just clicking the button is part of one part of one of the slot machine levers. 
And that's the thing that I don't like about it. It's like, we all know that this thing is built for a system that's meant to incentivize purchases in mobile games. And that's why we hate it. Like, opening up Wait, 50 packs in Hearthstone? I, I do. You don't hate that? Uh, It's whatever. If, on average, I have to farm for the same amount, I'd rather it be Gamba, yeah. I think that's fine. I mean, Crip has been opening Hearthstone packs for, for a decade. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I guess <laughs> he's fine with that, right? <laughs> so, so well, let's let's use let's use Hearthstone packs. Opening up Hearthstone packs was so crazy addictive. It was so amazing. And and just like, d d real quick, because I never have this opportunity. I'm a crazy huge big fan of Crip. I've been watching this stuff forever. Every single new expansion, watching you just open up like 300 packs just for like two hours straight was one of my favorite things. It got it's like so Christmas. bad. Well, then what's the problem, Macro? It got so <laughs> yeah. bad that they had to Content. put in, hey, if you open up this much, you will get a legendary because of how much it sucks people's psyche down the drain sometimes. Uh, like, oh, gaming like, time is worthless, though. People just didn't want to get scammed spending like 400 bucks. And it, the, 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 but the point I'm trying to make here is that like psychologically, it's doing the same thing, even if money isn't tied to it. And I don't think it should just be, I spend an amount, see what the result is, and then click reset. That's the exact same amount of gambling. It's just like less cool. I just think it's a little bit too aggressive. There's no failure point up to the first crit. I think that makes sense. Let me just click, what is my first crit? The second crit now has failure chance, but people are gonna be hard resetting at first crit when you're talking about best in slot end game gear. Like when you have triple greater affix or quadruple greater affix gear, you're, you're going to be hard resetting at first and second crit. There's a point in the end game where you are going to spend hours just clicking this button and resetting. And at that point, I have a problem with it because we're not playing the game. And you're also getting nothing out of it other than psychological uh, like draining. And that that's where I think it has an inevitable terminus of ultimately bad. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what Macro said. I, I don't feel that passionate about it, to be honest. Like the mo the thing that kind of annoyed me goes back to the previous point that we talked about, which was just the animations. Like if it was just fast in doing it, but you know, I don't have to wait like you know the animation every single time. It was like blacksmith upgrades on live server, it's just like click, 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 and done. I wouldn't mind too much, even if there's a fail chance or something. But in that case, without the animation, the fail doesn't really make much sense anyway. Because yeah, like you know, the, you have to fail animation, you know, wow, you failed. <laughs> Go again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I, I'm more in the camp of, okay, just remove the fail chance, make it cost more. If they don't remove the fail chance, I will be okay, as long as it's like, you know, not hours of clicking, as Macro said. So that is kind of like where I'm at. Like, I'm fine with just like over farming too many materials and kind of like, I know I know I will succeed no matter what kind of thing. And that is fine. Like, I'm not going to go, you know, do a pit run, then go to a blacksmith, do one upgrade, and then go back to the pit, do one run, do another upgrade. Like, I'm just going to farm for like an hour. And then I'm gonna upgrade everything, and that's, that's basically that's how it's gonna go. I'm not gonna run to the blacksmith every single time, so it won't really matter for me. And I would not really suggest to anyone to do that. But there will probably be people that will try that, and they go into the pit. They have the twenty percent success chance. They will fail, and then they will out of four because they're like, nah, I don't want to try to get it now. You know, <laughs> like it, this was their one shot or something. So yeah, I, think... I think people make, make make people uninstall kind of. So I am in complete agreement about the animation times. They're obnoxious, and at a minimum, they need to be uh, taken down tremendously. Kind of like Woody, I don't have a strong, I don't really have a strong opinion here. They can leave the gambling in. They can change it to a mathematical. That's fine. I, if I had to pick one or the other, if it was up to me, I, I think I'm with Crip here for two reasons. One reason is nothing like it is gambling in the game. Everything is exactly as we have described it. Get these materials, click upgrade. Get these materials, click upgrade. At least we're gambling something. The most fun I have in Last Epoch is going to that forge and trying to slam something, you know, just, just gambling with it. I just think it's fun. And it's the same thing with PoE. You get a really good item, and then you ask your chat, should I vow this? Everyone says, no, no, no. And some people say, yes, yes, yes. And then you just do it because you're a streamer, because who cares? Um, and I also just, I just genuinely, again, so first of all, it's the only system like it in the game. I don't mind it, and there's no money tied to it. There's money tied to it, obviously. It would be a massive problem. And I also just think it's a little bit more fun. I get that some people would feel bad about it, but kind of like Woody said, 
my gameplay doesn't change. Are you guys going to run one pit and go back, oh, I hope I hit this 20%? I mean, I'm sorry, but that's noob shit, right? You got to go farm for <laughs> two or three hours and then just spam it, and whatever you get is whatever you get, right? Can I, can I ask one question here? Because uh, I think this really changes the dynamic. In PoE, basically every type of like slamming or crafting that you can do can end in a brick, right? Like, there, are there any, like, infinitely resettable ones? There there are, like, I got to hit this one in 3,000 chance, and there is the one of one chance. It depends on the affix and how deliberate you can be about crafting it or removing it. Yeah, it's, it's a very complicated thing, but, yeah, there's, like, high range and low range of RNG for sure. My question is, because, like, basically the idea is you can brick an item in tempering, right? And realistically, unless you like needed very specifically one type of damage radius increase roll, tempering really doesn't brick brick, right? Like there's going to be perfect gear, but it doesn't like stop functioning for your build. If master working could brick, do you think that that is better or worse? How well, how would you brick it though? Like how would it brick? Like you crit three times. And if it, if you didn't get the ones that you wanted, that was, that was it boss. So you mean so like there's no reset? No, yeah. no reset. No button. reset. Yeah. <clears throat> or there could be there could be maybe like itemized resets that are like hard or difficult to get. I'd be okay with that. I think. Well, I mean, the whenever whenever I'm asked a question like that, the first thing that comes into my mind is not what what am I voting for, and what are what are the masses voting for, right? And the masses are already very upset that you can brick it from tempering. And the masses are already upset that even with the reset button, you have to pay your super endgame materials from the pit to even try again. So I don't know. I think most players, they probably won't even reset as it is. Um, I think that's kind of like how how PoE does it. Like it's like like more of a PoE solution that Kriparian is proposing. Like there is no reset, but there's a really rare consumable that lets you reset. One yeah. thing that I like about that kind of an idea is it it makes you choose what are the really important items to you. Like you bricked it, how much does that matter to you? Is this the greatest sword you ever found in your life? Or could you live to fight another day and use this one temporarily? I think every time you add a choice like that, at least in the very end game, I think usually you're making your game better. But I don't think the masses will agree with that. They're just gonna be mad that you took away their reset button. So some people didn't play the PTR. I think it's important to kind of like, I don't think I had this wrong, but the general acquisition of really good base gear is like way higher, right? Like it's, you just get so much more good rares or yes. good item bases with their new it, system. There has to be something to like differentiate between good and best. So like these systems are pretty important and it's, in a way, it's kind of important that you either can, can brick them or it's important that it takes a lot of time to really make it to the best tier. Like, like you, if you play a game and you just get the best gear in, like, 30 minutes, I don't know. Uh, well, then so you play Diablo good, 3, I guess. I don't know yeah. if that's really the, the best way to do it. So yeah. the... Just with just one one piece here. Mm -hmm. The differentiation is not like the base yellows, right? The 925s are easy to acquire, and because they cut down the affix pool, you can get really yeah. good affixes on your gear. The differentiation like, here that they're introducing is greater affixes. Yeah, that's what you're fishing you can, for. You can still like even even with the new affix system, usually one or two affixes are better than the others, and it's not that crazy hard to get even a base piece with a greater affix on the one stat you want most. Like, I felt like I kind of got that for half my character playing, like, a day, right? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with, with Crip here. It's like, the tempering, bricking the item, it's not necessarily such a huge deal because you constantly get new items. You can easily just, like, you know, farm for, like, a day, fill up, like, half a stash tab with, like, you know, swords if you want, and then start tempering them all un until you have, you know, the right temper with a high roll. And yeah, one of them might have a greater affix that you want, the other will not. And in the end, it's kind of like a differentiation of, okay, you have to, you have to, you know, the required temper mods that you want for your build, no matter what, because you're going to try it like on five different items and you will get them. 
but one of them is ha happens to have a high roll or a great affix of something you want, and the other one doesn't. And in the end, it's not such a huge deal, I think. Like, it will suck, you know, like having your three out of three greater affix item and one bricks. And also, you cannot repurpose this item for another character if you want. You know, this is your item for that build. And you can only temper the thing for that build, and that will be it. So you can't just take it back and then do something else with it. But on the other hand, it's not such a huge deal. I mean, I played the entire PTR basically never really looking at greater affixes, never really putting greater affixes in any of my setups. And, you know, my builds were still working. It's not like you acquire greater affixes. And getting items without greater affixes is just easy anyway. So the whole temper breaking stuff is not really a huge deal. That was my impression. I think ultimately I come down on, like, I'm glad that Masterworking can't realistically brick. Like, the bricking is just, like, getting the temper on it. And I do think that that's ultimately pretty fine. Like, the majority of my gear didn't have greater affixes on it. But there are some circumstances where like a greater affix would have been insane, right? Like triple master working a greater affix for core skill is an insane increase in damage in comparison to a greater affix on armor or life or intelligence. So it's like it, it, it it's a little bit hard for me to say right now, like, what does it look like? What is the difference? How bad do I feel when I find a perfect, you know, triple affix, greater affix item? And then it refuses to temper poison elemental surge. For my build like how bad is that going to feel it's like hard to say for me right now that's why the the added stress of like and then the rigmarole of master working i feel like could cause issues down the line so it's just interesting to figure out like if you could really really brick it how does that change how you evaluate this system and another thing to like vaguely consider like obviously the game needs to be fun right now but i don't know if it's been in campfire chats or in like the partner discord or whatever but blizzard has alluded to this is the beginning of their crafting system and the expansion i think is going to bring new things as well so it's possible that some of the decisions that they're making are in conjunction with other systems that are going to be implemented so we can sit here and analyze, you know, kind of our first taste of crafting. And, you know, like, for example, I think the, the animations, Macro's going to love this one. The animations just have to go, at least they need to be expedited <laughs> tremendously. Like, that's never okay. But there might be some combinations here coming up, which in theory might work very well, that we just we just aren't aware of at the moment. They They, they made this comment somewhere explicitly, I can't remember where, that... Some of the design of these systems is to be in conjunction with other ones that are going to be released soon. Yeah, that's also uh, a good point, I guess. Tough to say. Yeah, maybe maybe you can break your item on multiple steps of the way now in the future. That's going to be great. <laughs> maybe well, that is the could, combo. They could also do the PoE thing where they tie the seasonal mechanic more into items than just your character. Because... I feel like the borrowed power being literally something character based that just dies when the season ends is pretty lame, especially for people that don't want to play season. But if people who are playing like non season can like play season a little bit to acquire items that you can only really acquire through that, like I think that would maybe breathe life into the evergreen as well, which could be pretty interesting. Um, so I don't know. I mean, they could be referring to that as basically what I'm, what I mean. Like, they could, yeah, it could be seasonal stuff as well. Okay. Do you have any other thoughts on uh, the tempering? What about the mods? Like, how how are you impressed with the mods? Like, do you like them? Like, is there something you were wishing for that's missing? Okay, I I want to kind of chip in on this thing. The only thing that was like pretty lame for me is like. The most common stat across your entire gear set is utility, and most of the stuff in utility just seems kind of stupid. Um, is this just like a minion necro thing, or is this like an all classes thing? Because I only really played necro. Can you tell me specific what what were you experiencing exactly with the utility? So the utility slot is on shields, helmet, chest, pants, boots. And if you want amulets, there's no other like tempering thingy as common as that on your character. So it's almost as if you want to design a character around the utility slot because it's like half of the slots on your characters. 
So when I was looking at like Minion Necro, yeah, there's like curse size and stuff, which is like cool to get one of, but I'm just like looking at it and it's like I don't want I don't want seven of any of these. Oh, you just gotta go you go three crit uh affixes of corpse tendrils. You go three crit. I don't want to use corpse of tendrils, I'm done. Homie, you just you hit the next server over. You hit Diablo 3 from space with your decrepify size. It's insane. No, I mean, oh. you have a really good point, though. It's just like, at least on the Necro, there there really wasn't other cool stuff. Or I didn't find the tempering manual because there was like dozens and dozens and dozens that I wasn't able to find at all. And some of them are a bit more interesting than that. But it does come down to like, how big do you want corpse tendrils? How big so do you I want Iron I, Maiden? I think I saw in one of your recent videos, you, you, you play with like a controller now, right? Uh, yes, sir. Carpal tunnel. Okay, Let's go, so baby. If you if you went back to a mouse and keyboard, you would probably also give up corpse tendrils. So like, oh, they oh, haven't, yeah, yeah, they haven't yeah, yeah. fixed the corpse targeting. If if you play with a mouse and keyboard, you have to literally target the corpse, or else it fail casts. Like your character does the animation and nothing happens. But if you're on a controller, it just automatically targets. Wait, they the they already like massively increased the, the the radius though at which you have to hit. No, they didn't. Like, I didn't have that issue. Like for me, it was, like it was definitely it was definitely worse before they it's, they it's not they good. increased the radius of it. Um, I I have the opposite effect, which is like when I'm trying to set up Echo of Lilith or whatever, and I'm trying to target one corpse. It's just whichever one's in front of me. So I hope it's in range when I left it there. And if not, I just kind of have to laugh. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, like that's one of my biggest pieces of feedback is that quite literally these utility aspects or uh, tempered made it so I didn't feel like a second class citizen on a controller because I could actually hit stuff with my curse as opposed to just <laughs> the first minion in line and the boss behind it shooting out it's a thousand lightning bolts not getting touched by it. So I think it's a little a little you know a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B here of whether or not it's good enough. I'm just yeah I'm I guess just... back to my question is this whole like utility centric character building like a thing for the other classes too or the other classes have like actually decent options in that slot so i i, I don't know about that but it's just making me laugh because i made a minion necro and i was gonna go kill the capstone boss and i went to go temper my items and i got like i don't know curse dur curse bonus like hits five screens and I was thinking of exactly the question that Crip asked, but I, I had I came to a different conclusion. I was like, "Oh, they put utility slots everywhere because it's like the most dog shit thing because they can't put the good stuff everywhere because then everyone's going to be overpowered." I thought they were like trying to nerf me, like trying to <laughs> play a joke on me before I went to fight the boss. So I had this like seven seven curse radius decrepify that didn't help me at all. <laughs> Yeah, I think one thing to be aware of is that a lot of people probably didn't have all the manuals on the PTR. It's like it actually takes takes yeah, the time to find them. There's not a lot, even if you have them. Yeah, the even if you have them, there's not many. But number one, most people didn't have all of them. Number two, there's probably like a lot of recipes added in the near future as well. I think once they see a little bit like what works and so on, like I could imagine that okay, now for now we have this, and you know probably not gonna do much. But you know, season five they're probably gonna add like you know ten new temper manuals. Season six they're gonna add ten new, and you know it's gonna expand as we go as well with like more options and more cool stuff. But and the new ones, man, you're you're kind of hopium here, man. I I gotta tell you, I, yeah, I got I gotta be upfront. You, you gotta manage your expectations <laughs> nah, a little bit. I gotta like I don't know. If to me it feels like it's just like another kind of like similar system to like legendary aspects where like every season is gonna add you know five temper manuals at a minimum or something and. This is probably how it's gonna go. That is my okay, expectation. We're down to five. Five sounding a bit more. I mean, let's let's just go to three. Let's just call it three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's gonna expand. You know, the same. The, the system is made for expansion. Let's just say that. Yeah. So okay. there's there's even a scroll bar, and right now in the game, there's no class where you can scroll any of the recipes. So there is a scroll bar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that yeah. That's good detective work right there. I have yeah. I have my next hot take, you know, hell I'm gonna die on, and I assume everybody else doesn't care this much about it. Uh, the the weapon temper elemental surge needs to be removed from the game. It is the worst thing they've added to this game, and all it will do is homogenize basically every single meta and invalidate actual like build concepts. It's lucky a chance forty percent to do up to like sixty five thousand base damage in whatever flavor of damage type you want. And you can put it on two weapons or on the barb, you can put it on two two handers and two weapons and just <laughs> laugh 
just laugh <laughs> at the concept of there ever being balance in this game. It's like the only cool part about it is it's really begging the question like, can I get away with using a lidless? Should I use a two handed sword on every single necro build? Can I use Black River or do I want this temper effect? And then when you realize everything's better with the temper, like Bloodlance, strictly better with the temper effect. Blood Surge, strictly better with the temper effect. Sever, strictly better with the temper effect. And it's just like, why are there other options and why does this exist? People were begging, begging Blizzard the moment they found that to not nerf it, to not take it away. <laughs> I know. I saw like, a lot yo, of threads about that. <laughs> shout outs, shout outs to Riker. Riker was just like, hey, it was actually really fun putting that on a new character and being powerful. I'm like, I hear you, boss. They should just make new characters powerful and we should remove this like monstrosity from the game <laughs> or enjoy Elemental Surge season, honestly. Riker is not going to like this podcast, man. Nah, but I mean, sorry, boss. I, I, I agree with what Riker said, and it will happen that, you know, you make your alts and they're going to be incredibly powerful with or without Elemental Search. And I totally agree, Elemental Search has to go, or it has to be at least nerfed by like 80% minimum to not absolutely break the game. Like, I, I was playing a dot build, I was playing a Twisting Blades, Poison Rogue, you know, classic, and not scaling, and like, you know, create and, you know, hits and all that stuff very much. And I walked in there, I was like, okay, I have nothing to put on my weapon. So let's just take Elemental Search, yeah? And I went from like, you know, kind of blasting through like Pit 150 uh, to like my Puncture, like my basic ability, just two-shotting Elites suddenly. And it, I was like blasting even harder. But at that point, my like my whole build was just invalidated by Elemental Search. I was discussing this earlier on my stream as well. Like, it, like just putting Elemental Search on my weapons was completely invalidated. Everything else I had done with my character. <laughs> because my Puncture was just killing yep. everything now. So It's <laughs> insane. It, it's, it's like, it's... I... I understand why it's there. It's it's kind of this like catch all like people can actually finally grok what lucky hit does. Lucky hit make do damage, right? Like that's like very simple. It's easy to put on there. I think it'll be easy to tune, but in its current state getting double effectiveness on a two-hander for weapons or always using a two-hander, it just like it homogenizes things to a point where it's like it doesn't have skill tags. So building into blood or building into your flurry or building into core skills doesn't matter. You just put the fastest highest lucky hit effect on your build and you spam it all the way to the bank. I was doing like 250 mil DPS by just holding down right click on blight and doing nothing else on a blood surge build. I unironically, I put it onto my weapons. I put on the new blight amulet and I put blight on my skill bar and on a blood surge minion build, I walked up to a level 200 uber boss and did 250 million DPS. And it was just like, okay, hey, all right. Yeah, I guess screw whatever I was doing. That's fun. <laughs> Why do you hate Riker and what he wants out of the game? That's <laughs> hey, hey, man, hold on. All right, I'll, I'll, pr I'll, I'll prove I don't hate Riker. Hold on. Oh, what's wait? Going does on? he have one of the hats? Oh my <laughs> god! All right, perfect. And this isn't one of the hats. This is Riker's hat. I annoyed him at BlizzCon long enough for him to finally give me one because that's the type of friend I am. Shout out to CJ, love you, man. But but no, I I I, I do hear him. But there's a reality. Like we can't just allow the end game to be destroyed because this cool thing is in there the now. reality I is know. it's in the game macro and it doesn't need to go away unless you beg them to i think the reality, the reality is it's on a ptr and that is ever the only thing you're going to see of a metal search so this is like <laughs> my my reality that i'm hoping for at least so that was also one of the first things i wrote in my feedback document actually like a mental search guys <laughs> i actually i i saw that i didn't actually put it on my any of my weapons because i was like trying to make specific build so i guess i should have tried that i mean i'm gonna play a minion master so i need this elemental surge as nerfed as possible so i can be god among mortals in, in the game <laughs> if it makes you if it makes you feel good crip because like you said you only got like a day and a half into it by the end the damage numbers that we were getting up into once they fix this like super bugged amulet that they added for blight no other build is even going to vaguely come close to minions damage output or survivability so like you're super in the clear don't even worry about it okay cool okay any other cool stuff in the in the crafting though in the tempering um i'm not sure i'm crazy about like hp on every item uh i don't know if this is like a shared thought cuz like i think you can get hp on actually every item and I think uh, you can, yeah. with with them removing survivability stats, it's like I, I I see them taking advantage of the fact they removed survivability stats, but they left HP in, and it's on every item. Like, 
Why not just like make it twice as much and rip it off half the items? I don't know, just something like that. I I don't hate it as like a base concept, right? It's like you can truly make like I want my weapon to have this because I'm instead putting this other stat onto like that piece of gear or whatever. Except that things like pants and the chest piece, other than plus two passive skills, which they added to it, there really aren't other cool stats for me to put there. So why wouldn't I put maximum life? My major issue is that like every single piece of gear had cool. int and life on it. And at that point, it's like, okay, do you actually want me to come up with a build or do you just want to give me the three stats that's good for my build and I'll just put on that piece of gear? That's kind of like what it felt like every single time I picked something up. It had int and max life. And I was like, I mean, okay, if I put on enough of this, I will be vaguely useful. I just need to make sure I get crit and attack speed somewhere else. But yeah, I, I, I don't like, again, how homogenized it is because it doesn't actually feel like I'm making choices a lot of the time. That's interesting because I, I personally, I felt like it was relatively interesting, like trying to do different combos with the tempering affixes and like, you know, the combinations with like the affixes are actually on the, on the items themselves. Like, okay, like the weapons were like definitely the most impactful and kind of that makes sense. You know, it's like, okay, weapons are like your centerpiece, you know, this is, this is usually how it works and this is fine. You know, you have like the cool stuff to cast twice and just kind of effects there. And I really like to see a lot more of this kind of stuff as well. But there can also be like interesting, like kind of like utility effects, like, you know, like bigger uh, curses, bigger whatever. And, you know, it kind of makes you f makes the game feel different. And I actually really enjoyed that. Also, like stuff like cooldown reduction for specific skills that they can put on like utility slots. Yeah. Like there was like Frost Nova cooldown or something, for example. So all that stuff kind of like feels really amazing because, you know, it can really kind of like hypercharge a certain thing for your build. So I really enjoyed that. And I don't really mind having like life on every piece or so because it actually allows you like this kind of like building into defenses if you want to, right? We're talking about like how hard it is to survive one shots, but you can actually try to survive one shots by just building more life, for example. I mean, this is kind of like what it does, right? And okay, you can't temper like ridiculous amounts of life on the gear, it has like lower values than the drops, but you know, you just need to get to the point where you don't get one shot and suddenly the game becomes like a hundred times easier because now you can heal up again and then you can get one shot again, but actually live. So I think that they the way they distributed it was actually fairly reasonable with, you know, the life rolls and, you know, other choices there versus but interesting stuff. I, I really, like, forward thinking, I think it's not random that they deleted all the tanky stats on your gear. I think it's intentional because they want to make tanky characters something that's hard to achieve. Now, if that holds true, Every character is going to have life rolled on every item. Is that good? That's that's just where I'm at. Like, uh, like I, I really get where you're coming from, Woody, because you, you you want that investment to be meaningful. But if 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 it goes from meaningful to like default, like I think that's bad. So when when I played, I played the entire PTR on softcore, but. When the season launches, I'm only going to play hardcore. So the whole point of me is to understand, you know, the new defensive systems. And, you know, we honestly understand capping armor, capping resistances. And then I'm looking for other options. Where do I get my defense and how does it feel? So my conclusion is kind of kind of what Kriparian is saying, at least with, with what we see today. We don't see how it ties into season four. And we don't see the next mechanics that they're going to bring in or whatever. But I, so life rolls on every item, but that wasn't my approach at all. My approach was I am getting life on every item. Like I am going for this because I need this. Like there's no world where I will play with what I know about season four, almost regardless of what build I will play, where I will not take every single life node on every single item and I, I understand hardcore is more of a niche thing and softcore haha ha, okay you'd get one shotted by a lilith wave it doesn't matter you lose 30 seconds you go back and you clear it you get you get your pit upgrade anyway it doesn't matter so this is like more of a niche thing but at least the way that i was envisioning playing this game i didn't feel like it was a choice i felt like i had to take life on every single thing if i wanted to try to avoid these one shots where i feel like they succeeded a lot in in the stats that are available what you can temper 
and how impactful it felt was in jewelry. My amulet and my rings could, without putting like a single resource aspect on it, solve all of the utility issues that my build needed. And then I could focus on other stuff with the other pieces of gear. And I think the rings is like the best example of like, I had to come up with cool tempering things and get good rolls. And now I have this much essence per second and this much cooldown reduction and this much ultimate cooldown reduction. And then I have these damage rolls on it. That felt very, very good. It didn't feel good looking at my helmet, my chest, my boots, and my pants. And they all had int and life on them. Um, and then like some movement speed. Like that was the thing I didn't like about it. And I also think there was like a wild weight to affixes. I don't know if anybody else like tried to roll a lot. I rolled a hundred yes. armors trying yes. to find macabre skills on a chess piece. And I found two out of a hundred, which is like, that's, that's why I started getting pretty sick of life and intelligence. Cause every single armor I picked up had life and intelligence on it, but none of them decided that they wanted to have this single one stat I needed to test out. Um, so maybe some of this just comes down to like, they have really weird weights on affixes. And then that made it feel like, like it wasn't an option farming for like these other stats or getting more interesting combinations that could definitely be part of it for me at the very least but like rings and amulets out of the park i feel like are nearly perfect in how they were working weapons were pretty simple although i did like getting like 50 resource cost reduction on my two-handed site that was pretty rad yeah i kind of agree with that point about the affix weights this is actually a complaint i have heard a lot like they made enchanting like easier and like less costly and you know you don't like soft brick an item with like ridiculous millions and dozens of millions of gold costs although it does still scale to like a few million or so depending on the item but just the fact that i have to roll like a hundred times sometimes to even find like a cdr roll or you know a certain skill roll like they had like a, an insane weight and i think what they did is they have the same weight for the item drop as for the enchanting because yeah. it's like the same category of stats but I think what they should do is that the drops on the ground probably are weighted more towards like the typical in the life, whatever, like the universal stuff. And then mm -hmm. the enchanting is the opposite. Like the enchanting actually allows you to more often roll the skills or the cooldown or, you know, some, some other like specific stats that you use to like uh, min-max your build a little bit with like a, a conscious choice. I think that would make a lot more sense the way it worked. But it seemed like they both had the same weight towards in the life and like armor and like typical standard rolls. And you could never get, you know, something spell specific. It was really hard. I had a, had some problems that maybe were a bit more basic. Uh, I had trouble getting move speed on boots. And uh, in terms of the, the tempering, there's like move speed on boots. And there's also get points in a passive that gives less move speed than move speed on boots. Yeah, that uh so and 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 chat asked me about the one. So it so it's literally it's like you can get a twelve percent roll on movement speed, or you can get two ranks of death's approach. And two ranks of death's eight. approach gets you eight yeah. percent movement speed. So why would you my thought was if master working actually works where like getting these percentages could get up to a larger total rank bonus than the movement speed, then it's worth it to like invest in it later. The issue with testing that is that like one the like plus to rank skills like just wasn't working and two uh hitting a plus one rank to death's approach and then master work crediting it twice and not getting up to a plus two was a pretty interesting outcome so i i think that's the logic i'm trying i'm trying to give them like the benefit of the doubt here but yes mathematically it is strictly worse unless something else is supposed to happen here yeah, maybe, I mean, you have the option to have, you know, the good movement speed or the bad movement speed hidden behind the passive or just having like another stat that kind of like does nothing at all for your build, right? So I guess this is probably like what they were thinking. It's like, okay, there's a good role, there's a bad role. I think it would maybe make some sense if that, uh, you know, if like these passes would, for example, allow you to go past the movement speed cap that exists in a game or something like that. Where, you know, like this works that way in, in Diablo 3, for example, right? You have a 25% bonus cap of movement speed. But then all the passives, all the skills, they actually allow you to go over that cap. So you have a kind of like a distinction, but this distinction doesn't exist in Diablo 4. So it doesn't really make any sense to have these different effects. Druid also had that with the passive, where you could get like a move speed passive and it's just strictly worse than movement speed on the boots. So it's kind of like, why? <laughs> I also don't know where this crap comes from, but like the whole having to 
roll or get lucky to find movement speed on boots is just the stupidest mechanic across every single ARPG I've ever played. Like, I don't know, the, the, there should there should be a different reason why I use a boot or another rather than movement speed. I don't know. It's too universal, you mean? Uh, no, it's just mean, like, oh, this, these mean... boots don't have movement speed. I'm deleting it. Said every yeah. player in every ARPG ever, right? <laughs> so you want you want to move the movement speed to an implicit and make the item pool more interesting to choose your boots, something like that. Yeah, and it's it's just so binary, right? Like it's like movement speed, okay, is the rest good? Movement speed, no, leave it on the ground, right? I don't know. That's just just lame, lame in D four. It's lame in Poe. It's lame in Last Epoch. I don't know. It's just lame. <laughs> I don't know, it's not interesting. It's this really interesting like dichotomy that's like, it should just be that when I put on the boots, I go faster. But if that's the case, I should just go faster. Like, why right. is it that boots do this in the first place? Like, it's interesting you can put it on your amulet. Sure, okay, yeah, that's like, that's interesting itemization. But I'm going to get movement speed on my boots, and I'm going to temper movement speed, and I'm I'm going to hit cap with my mobility aspect on my boots. So wh So why don't we all just move faster? Is kind of like it's this a, eternal subliminal sneaker advertising. Yeah, there's just there's just no choice to it. Yeah, that's a good point. I honestly, when I got to the amulet and I was thinking about slamming something on it, I was of the opinion on pretty much every build that I made that movement speed was the best step. Again, like it's just so strong. But that's that's interesting, right? You you weigh in massive opportunity cost on an amulet. That's that's an actual decision that you're making. Right. I'm I'm right. all good with that. Yeah. Just for for the record. Yeah, it's it's true. Like on the boots, there's like no choice. Like it's like okay, you go movement speed, and if you don't have movement speed, the, the boots are trash. So either it needs to come of it, you need to you know temper it, and otherwise the boots will just be deleted. That's like exactly what Crip said. Which I yeah. guess maybe we're gonna get more stats in the future that makes like other choices more interesting, or maybe they could like rework the boots implicit in the future, and you know it's just gonna be a thing for boots. Yeah, there's like many ways to solve that, but I totally agree with that point. Actually, in terms of like, decision okay. making, there's nothing there. I think I think you just do exactly what Crip said. I think like boots give you what four hundred base armor. They give you twelve percent movement speed, and movement speed is no longer an affix on. It's no longer an affix on boots, and it's no longer a tempered thing on boots. And when you have to actually take that godly of a stat like on an amulet, it's an opportunity cost. I mean, why don't you just? You you can make the implicit whatever you want, like to balance it. Oh, but Rax, we were going to get this tempered and masterworked. Okay, so you make the implicit twenty percent or whatever the hell it is. But that would certainly make one of the itemization choices more interesting. I think that's just a strict win right there. And yeah, I did have uh, a few reservations about some of them as well. Like, um, like they removed all the DR stats except shields can get like the percent DR. I don't know what it goes to like seven point three or something. Like it's not a million. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting. Sure. But then they didn't use the opportunity of reworking how items work across the board to like, I don't know, just come up with something good or interesting. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like PoE has like you can like not PoE every RPG you can scale block, uh, and uh, and a lot of these games they have life on block, which is like a super scaling of block. It's like rewarding you for scaling block. Yeah, it's like five percent chance cool. to cast lightning nova when struck. Hell, I'll even take that. That sounds all right. If if it's like a proc on block or something, or when struck, yeah, it's just I don't know. It just seems like a wasted opportunity. It I guess I like... guess a bigger problem, first of all, is that block doesn't really like, it's not really a thing in Diablo Four, right? Only necromancers yeah. only necromancer can use shields, and even then, it's like a niche choice. So you I know, think like that's kind of the main problem. Chance to, the twenty percent chance to not fully stop incoming damage. That's that's not cool for you. 20% <laughs> chance to still get one tapped by a Lilith wave. That's not, you don't find this interesting? I mean, Are you sure you block that Lilith wave? <laughs> we need a yeah, that doesn't even work. Yeah, it doesn't even work. Yeah. Like, no, the, the thing is, I mean, the choice between like a one hander and a shield is kind of like just kind of similar. Okay, do we put like a defensive aspect on your amulet or not? It's kind of like in the same ballpark, I guess. You know, if you go for that, and like Necro just has two or three choices to make. If you want to be really tanky, you can go for the shield and for the defensive aspect on the on the neck, and otherwise you don't. So I guess it's just like a Necro thing right now. Maybe long term you're gonna get shields on barbs as well. I could imagine, but 
that's probably about it. Maybe the new class, who knows? So, um, yeah, it's just like a shield thing. And I honestly don't mind that shields are somewhat simplified in the other four compared to other RPGs. Because it's usually kind of like the same thing that we do with crit. It's like, okay, you play a crit build, you, you scale crit chance and then crit damage. And those two things always go together. And then for a block build, you always have like, you know, block chance and like, I don't know, block effectiveness in last epoch or like some other I'm synergy. Gonna, I'm going to have to interrupt you here, Woody. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're going to need a bias check. You're going to have to answer honestly. Do you or do you not like playing minion characters? I do not like playing minion characters. Yeah. See? See? That's why he's hating on shields. That's why. <laughs> No, I, I kind of like playing with shields. So like for example, in PoE and stuff, I kind of enjoy having a shield. But it's it's not like that I, that I dislike the idea of having a shield. It's just that I think they're actually fine in D4. I think that there's nothing really outrageously wrong with them without having a like crazy life on block or I don't know, crazy effects. But I do agree that maybe they could make more cool stuff, especially with tempering. That's what I talked about earlier. You know, new recipes. They could add more stuff. They could add something like a defensive temper thing that is like you know life gain on, on block or something why not right you can put on a shield maybe you can make literally make like a shield category of tempers as well right so that there's options like that and tempering is probably wherever they will put all the cool new stuff that we can dream of uh in the future so this is kind of like brings me back to the point earlier where i think that's going to expand on this as we go so yeah i, I mean of... go ahead all right I want to kind of hop on that and say that, like, in general, in, like, the character builder gamosphere, I think shields are, like, really cool. Like, I always have that, like, you know, image of, you know, the, the sword shield warrior going up against the dragon. The dragon does the fire breath, and you just shield it, and the shield's getting hot, but it's stopping the dead. You know, it's like, I think I think it's, like, a pretty pretty significant part to just like throw in the garbage and leave it to what it is i'm i'm really not super happy with shields i'm not even happy that only necromancers can use them like the fact that barbarians can't use shields is just what like... yeah I, I they were supposed to i think because i think back in the beta they had like transmog options that he couldn't get as as uh, shields offense so i think at some point they were supposed to have shields and they removed that but i agree i would like to see barbarian with shields maybe the, maybe in the future <laughs> I mean, another thing back to the original point, uh, it doesn't need to be shields or block, right? Like the DR has gone down, they're making the game more challenging. It's there are other interesting mechanics and you know that other games have, you come up with your own system, like endurance, for example, in Last Epoch is pretty interesting where when you fall below a certain threshold, it's gonna give you massive DR and really what it helps you against is one shots. Like you get Hit and then oh that that last portion of the damage can be mitigated if you build into it to try to survive specifically a Lilith wave that doesn't really help you, you know. In a lot of other cases, it doesn't just have to be shields and blocking. It could be could be other stuff as well. Bell suppression, for example. Yeah, maybe they're gonna come up with some cool new systems. I agree. I really like endurance, for example. I think it's a very well designed mechanic in the asset book. So it could like be nice the if there's like more of stuff. Fortify, right? Where like fortify <laughs> is a strictly uninteresting system that says sometimes you have ten DR, but other times yes. it's just nothing. It's like the exact some... opposite of that, but actually good. <laughs> some people are saying yeah, for fortify in chat. Yeah, I think endurance is way better than fortify by yeah. a lot. They're not comparable. Just, yeah, it's not. Like, Necros have Fortify, it's easy to obtain, and I still don't get it. And you know what? With with the major restriction on DR sources, yeah, fuck that, I'm still not going to get it. <laughs> I'm just not going to get it. Because it's just, well, no Fortify thing. needs to be very easy to get in order to be worth it, right? So it's kind of like where it, it is right it, now. It is, but I feel like when I die, I'm just surrounded or CC'd. And at that point, Fortify is not coming back up after I get hit once or twice. So I don't know. I just yeah. I think when I actually need to take less damage, it's not going to work. Well, if that is why you die, then there's two aspects for you. That's eluding and the ghost walker and the easy clap. Oh well, I guess it will be a little bit different next patch. Next patch, you can <laughs> use your golem cooldown to break you out of CC, which is very nice. It's very nice. The other problem with it, though, uh, is because like they made the golem activation like so much of a damage output that like you want to spam it for damage and then you send them in and then something CCs you from behind and you're like, oh snap, I sure have three seconds to wait before I can become unstoppable again. I guess I'm being punished for having dealt damage. It's 
it's one of like the more interesting like there there there's there's I mean I could go on forever about minions, but it's just like there's so many things where they have implemented so much great stuff that kind of invalidates some of the stuff that they also put in. You can just tell that like these two concepts happened parallel but not together. And then they're like, oh, they get all the stats and, and the golem's awesome. And you're never gonna put unstoppable on your bar ever again. But the moment that you use your golem, you can now just get CC'd and it doesn't help your minions at all. I don't know. It's like it's 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 weirdly it's they they always call it that like gift and a curse thing where it's just like it's awesome. The moment that you use it, you are now screwed. You better not get hit by anything. So I'm gonna assume you also didn't use Bone Golem. Hmm. No, I use Bone Golem. The Bone Golem gives you like uh, it's like half the duration of the Golem. It's like three seconds. With the Golem aspect, you get pretty good uptime on Unstoppable. Actually. The Golem the Golem aspect really performed a lot better now. Like it's twelve percent now, something like that. It performed surprisingly better. And I'm yeah. much more willing to use it. And I, and I I mean, like, also in, like, the end-to-end -end game, it was perfectly fine. But, like, when I was playing on, like, crap gear and just kind of tossing stuff together, I would send in my golem and then get frozen. And I was like, well, all right, I'll just sit here until the CC is over. Um, but, yeah. All right. I, th I thought it was really, I mean, I, it's hard for me to complain because it's so much better than last patch. So, I, yeah. I don't know. I'll I'll take it. Uh, thank Thank you, sir. You know, I'm 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 not I'm not complaining about it. Just just so those people who understand. So the last patch, people didn't really play necromancers because you couldn't make corpses, which was just it was like not good and not fun. Uh, but it was still like a pretty okay build overall. But you know now minions do crazy damage. They fixed the corpses, but one one change they made last patch is people don't really know. So the the bone golem, it does like a like a six second taunt. But it's unstoppable while it has the like thorns buff the whole time, so it's the only golem that will actually do stuff. It's like it's like the only golem you should be using except for like boss encounters for any any version of necromancer basically. Um, and yeah, now next patch they made it so when you use your golem cooldown, you are also unstoppable yourself. Uh, so if you use the golem aspect, which is like six percent. Um, or is twelve? You said is it twelve? Yeah, they buffed it up to twelve percent, boss. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. So the the bone golem also does a double attack, so it procs that twice more than any other golem. So you can just very literally spam the um the golem button and be unstoppable, and your golem unstoppable the whole time, uh, unless your minions are just spam killing everything, and the golem doesn't even get to auto attack. And yeah, I only played like a day, so that was actually a problem because I only got to like pit level forty or something. So basically, like, you need to nerf the skellies. Yeah, nerf the skellies, and then you write, uh, "This is a buff." <laughs> this is probably how if you go. if you open pit level one and summon a skelly and run around, your conclusion will not be that the skellies need a nerf. I bet I bet my four hundred one k on it. <laughs> I bet my four hundred one k. Okay. They, they need help. They, they like like maybe their damage swinging the sword is good, but they're 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 in the psych ward. They do not understand what a monster is. They don't understand what a gate is. They they don't know what to attack, who to protect. They need help. I think that the golem was doing a huge amount of the damage, but now they have like you know minion count mattering for so many other reasons. Also, I don't know if you managed to get a Mendeln ring. I didn't. But on paper, it sounds like you really want to have the maximum number of minions with the new Mendeln ring. Oh, I came to the exact opposite opinion. You basically don't use Mendeln on minion builds uh, because you actually scale their damage and you give them multipliers. So you're not actually scaling your own damage. So Mendeln is like literally unnecessary. Like your your golem is going to do a billion damage when you when you max him out. You don't need Mendeln when he does a billion damage. Um, yeah, it's uh, Mendeln. Mendeln actually is in really. Woody and I have talked a lot about this. Um, okay. Basically, they made it so that Mendeln now triggers off of attacks from your minions rather than lucky hit. And since it's... it scales off of you, what that basically means is that you get to use minions for utility and still normalize their damage contribution to your build, as opposed to having to invest in them. So it's 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 interesting. It's now like the non minion necro minion build option for like blood builds and bone spear or sever using them for utility uh, which is a good thing it's just even less intuitive than it was before for the player base i mean yeah uh again i haven't tried it but 
I was planning on doing less minion specific things and more general scaling on my Necromancer and just using Mendeln. I also used Mendeln uh, this season, even though I didn't have any lucky hit and wasn't really proccing much of it. Uh, I was using it for its stats, and its stats are even more uh, important next season because it actually deleted minion health from gear. Uh, so that has like 50% of it, which is a lot. I'm not even sure if you can get 50% through Paragons. So. Uh, the 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 cool part is that they do scale with your maximum life now, like 100% of your maximum life. So like mm -hmm. when you put 30,000 life on you, they sure have 30,000 life too. But yeah, it okay. is it is now a very unique. It's unique in the fact that it has that stat and it is gone from all other places. But um, yeah, I, I basically wasn't using it on any of my minion builds except in like testing early on to see how good it was. All right, enough necro for now, I guess. <laughs> no, are you, are you sure? We we could like keep yeah, no. <laughs> creating notes here. Sorry. It's, I mean, it's definitely an interesting discussion with the minions, and it's definitely one of the highlights in terms of new builds that are coming, or like new builds, right? In terms of like what people are actually gonna play. So um, that's cool. There's other new cool stuff as well. Like you know, we were talking about crafting and the tempering. Uh, for example, one build that I tried was the uh, the hurricane druid, which was really fun to finally make work. And it actually turned out to be one of the better builds out there as well for Druids. And uh, that was entirely enabled by just the mod Hurricane Duration on your weapon. So that's that's kind of awesome stuff that came out of that as well. And I think we're going to see more of that with like, you know, potentially like a hit shenanigans with like double casts. And, um, you know, all these kind of like, you know, maybe other cool effects that they're going to bring in the future as well. But it's kind of cool how something as simple as Hurricane Duration can just create a build with like the existing tools that already exist. And I think there's going to be more opportunities for that in the future. So I hope they're going to do that. Was like any other cool stuff that you discovered outside of, you know, the Necro stuff and I don't know what we just said. What I was mean, that? I really only played Necromancer, but yeah. were there like other builds not like hugely using the the direct damage proc aspect i thought i thought that was well i mean okay the direct proc, the, the elemental search aspect was definitely like you know the choice if you cared about making the best build possible but you know under the assumption that this thing will either not exist or you know in a mass massively nerfed form like I, obviously i was not testing this stuff very much because there was no point in trying to make anything with elemental search because it's just gonna get obliterated most likely so you know if you want to actually test the build i was not using it in that case, yeah. yeah, there's many viable builds, of course. What about a Northeast two-button build? The uh, the Frosty Strides auto <laughs> teleport, just like nine hundred thousand base scale damage or whatever. That was insane to look at. Yeah, Frosty Strides in looking at the patch notes was already like, yeah, okay, this is fucking broken. <laughs> it turns out, yeah, of course it is broken. When you can like you know Frosty Strides uh, two times per second for ninety thousand base damage. It turns out, yeah. So this is just like what I expected, what I was expecting to happen, and uh, people did it, and I'm glad they did. So it also gets obliterated. I hope. Another thing that I tested, I wouldn't say this was a cool result, but um, I went over to the Druid and tried Companion Druid. It, I mean, it was better than current day Companion Druid. And one thing that we heard, I think, on one of the campfire chats was, well because people were complaining that companion druid was so bad they were like well i guess we might be able to do something with companion druid but companion druid is never going to be like a necro minion build right and i think some druid players were actually pretty offended by that statement because they were like why can't companion druid be as viable as necro so i was like all right let me go try the companions obviously they're better now that you get the stats but it's nothing compared to the necro like i had to go seek out multiple aspects just to be as strong as just the, this, the vanilla Necro playing the game. So I think Companion Druid, while it's better, is still way behind Minion Necro for anybody that cares. And there are some people who care. So I actually rolled Companion Druid in Season 3, and uh, it's like the number the numbers on it are actually pretty good, but the, the problem are the the min your min your companion sorry your companions get cc'd and there's no way to break cc on a companion druid but it's worse than that where they actually the added unsolvable now to the wolves controlled. sorry they added unsolvable on the wolves you can now oh, okay. they become unsolvable yeah, now. I, think, I think they're just yeah ba 
is it base unstoppable? Is it no, a it's tree like, or no? It's like when you press a button, basically. But pressing the button is okay. like almost all of your damage anyway. So yeah. Well, yeah, that was that was the issue. Uh, they would if they were CC'd when you'd press your button on live right now, they would consume the cooldown and not do anything. And then when they'd come out of CC, they wouldn't use the cooldown. It was just it's like it's just lost. Cooldown. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually played a uh, companion druid on the PTR, and I gotta say they are actually feeling pretty decent now. The main issue I had with them was that they were just dying way too much. Like compared to Necromanians, Necromanians just like you know you you have like the the ring on and they get constantly healed and resummoned or whatever you don't care. But this doesn't happen on a druid. On a druid, your, your pets die and you have to like ten seconds for the wolves to come back, and you have to run circles in the boss arena in the pit, like in a high level pit. They, they stand in the boss area, they get blasted, and they're gone, you know, that's it. <laughs> you know, when I include the companions, they is especially good for single target damage. For example, I was trying like a Lightning Storm companion hybrid build. Yeah, Lightning Storm was doing good AoE damage. Sometimes I press the wolves, I kill some elites with them. That was working out pretty well, even like pit 120 or something. But then I come to the boss, and I need my companions to kill the boss, and they just die in like every single AoE. That was like the really main gripe I had with them. But otherwise, they were actually kind of fine like i really enjoyed playing with them i had the same experience there versus the skellies they were dying way more often same experience standing around with none of them alive yeah that was that that's definitely something that needs a bit of like uh help there so even if you try some stuff of like i don't know blood howl to try to heal them or something you can never do that like often enough compared to like a necro healing their skellies and they will just get you know too short anyway by like the boss attacks or something so i think they need like some general damage avoidance or maybe something i can spec into at least you know for like i know aoe attacks and, and all that and it would help out for sure but yeah we also have someone in chat who's like very insisting about us talking about druids so <laughs> i guess they're happy now but apparently druids are struggling and i cannot really agree with that at all like I ha having played quite a bit of druid i felt like druid were kind of like cruising through the high pits um, you know, even with what I just described, I feel like Druid has a lot of really good stuff in the next patch. I mean, they have been very strong since launch, and I don't know, they keep getting better, I feel. They're not like, like OP, like one-shot everything, two screens away kind of OP, but Druids are generally, I think, in a really fine spot in my book, at least, for my test. Aren't they literally putting out the most damage right now? I know it's not like the end-all be-all metric, but like, don't they literally <laughs> have the most broken build currently? No, that's just purely based on a bug uh, with the hurricane. Yeah, okay. But um, I, yeah, what a lot I of mean, people are probably running into is like Druid probably felt the reduction in survivability the most, right? Because you were kind of, it, it, I don't feel like it was very hard to become kind of unkillable on the Druid, or at least in like more casual gameplay. So are people just suffering from like not acclimating to the changes? I don't know. I'm uh, again, I have very I little don't know experience what on the Druid. Like, but, uh, so Druid was like innately pretty tanky, but also they had like the armor rolls while shape shifted it was like getting armor on like boots and that opened up like extra slots on the op survivability pieces but now those don't have survivability stats anymore, exactly so i'm yeah. not sure they really made out any better than the other classes in the changes yeah i mean um like just just in general like i guess people don't talk that much about druid because druids are kind of just like fine you know okay there's like this bug build People say Boulder, it's actually Hurricane, guys. Uh, it does like 2 trillion damage or two, 200 trillion damage, depending on how much you want to stack the above. Yeah, there's like some bug. But outside of the bug build, Druids are in a, in a fine spot. Like, you know, we even get to the point where you just run the, this Shepard combo and, you know, we give up on, like half of our survivability on defensive slots. You could have had like, you know, three defensive skills or you can have the Shepard combo for extra damage. And people are still running that in pit 200 because, you know, you, you don't actually need the extra survivability. So I think they're... They're fine. In fact, I would even advocate for like a debilitating raw nerf because I feel like it's a bit too much day and night having enough versus not having enough and maybe buffing like the base defense a bit or something like that along those lines is like something that I put in my feedback because 70% damage reduction, you know, having it up, you feel like, a t like an immortal tank and having it down, yeah, you get blasted and it's like too much of a, you know, like, you know, get good kind of scenario where I feel this will probably turn off people from really that's enjoying so bad, it though like i don't know that, that that seems that seems like it can work okay to me now nah, 70 like, percent damage I, reduction I, makes it immortal this is just how it works in, in the other four i feel if you have it up right, you're immortal but but like the idea of having a longer cooldown super dr button rather than like 20 dr 
Yeah. That sounds fine okay. To me. Yeah. The the yeah. idea of that is cool, but the, the reality is, in 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 twenty twenty four, we're playing with permanent debilitating raw. You know, you can reset the cooldown with with hunter zenith, and uh, you know, there's man, there's multiple ways of doing that, but most people will do it with hunter zenith, which is the ring that you you kill a target, and then the next time you cast the debilitating raw, it will not have a cooldown basically. So it's kind of like a reverse cooldown reset, and. Yeah. Uh, you have to play around that completely, basically, in, in like high tier pit on like most builds, because most builds will be storm builds with tempest raw and blah blah blah. So that's kind of how that works. And yeah, it's like you know you do a mistake, you don't have a debilitating roar because you press it too early or something, and then you die. So this is like how, how many people will experience the druid, and that is a bit of a problem I feel because it gives you so much dr in one slot in in like one skill, and if you kind of do a little mistake with that, that's it. So I think that could change a little bit. Sounds like they just gotta remove that aspect. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of fun to play with that. I think it, the, the hunter standard itself is not such a problem. As I said, I think it would be better just like balance it out a bit better. Maybe make the build turning more like fifty percent or forty. But you know, you add like an extra defensive passive somewhere or you know these kind of things. I think that would probably you know just even it out a bit, smooth it out a bit. That would help a lot more. And the, the play style itself is actually kind of okay. But yeah, either way, I mean, for for druids, I guess since I'm probably the only one who has really tried a lot, I think you don't have anything to worry about as long as you, you know, actually not not really. There's, there's like so many good builds on druid. I think druids are just gonna be in a fine spot no matter what. So I think that's that's pretty much my my take here on the druids. They're really powerful. They probably I would actually rate them like the post nerfs that I expect. I would rate druid most likely like second most powerful or so, depending on what they nerf exactly. I think they're gonna be good. What's the most powerful? But most powerful post nerves is probably Barb, is my expectation. <laughs> Again. But yeah, we'll we'll see. Like it just depends on the final patch notes. Right now, I don't think that Druid is really on the nerve radar in any way. And you know, Sorks are, Bobs are, you know, there's a bunch of stuff. And uh Druids are not on the nerve radar, I think. So they're gonna be fine. Do you think, do you expect them to nerf minions at all? At least their damage? Not to start. They will, they will set this world on fire. Yeah, um, I think so. Like, too. <laughs> in, in, in my, in my feedback, like, like quite literally what I say is like, Hey, these are overperforming. Like, there's no question about it. Mathematically, they're better than anything else that you can do. Let us have that for one season. Just like the whole season. Let, let us be Hoda Barb for the whole season. And then let's bring it into like more realistic in line with what it should be, which is a thing that you choose to spec into if you want that to be your primary damage and kit, as opposed to just better than anything else that you can do by a wicked far margin. Um, and that's that's what I'm hoping they end up doing. It's not yeah, really so... like how to barb though. Like how to barb like the one tap Duriel in season two and three is was pretty ridiculous. Like they're doing like a hundred times the damage if we are really considering the damage window right. it's 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 more so the pervasiveness like l let us have our hota barb like let us have our everybody is complaining that they fail fomo because they're not playing this one super overpowered build like let us let us experience that because the necromancer hasn't experienced that since like season zero where bone spear was like the only thing that could kill echo of lilith consistently until people figured out men down right like people all the time are like we've never had a broken build i'm like you used to tell people literally go make a bone spear if you want to get the echo of lilith achievement i don't know why we're like pretending like that didn't happen for a while but <laughs> it's been long enough where let us have this thing let us enjoy how powerful it is so that we can reset our expectations be like you know what now that we've experienced it yeah it would make sense if this was more in line but it's just been like it's been the redheaded stepchild for so long where it's like if it gets fixed in the mid-season patch like, yeah, we're going to cut it by 50%. Uh, you know, I'll go get my pitchfork too. I don't know where we're going to meet up, maybe somewhere in, you know, the Americas, just so we can get a lot of the player base together. But like, I really hope it's like a full season and then season five, they're like, okay, we're pulling it back into line. So Macro, just to see if I understand this right, did you say that if we have a super overpowered minion Necro for a season, that by the end of it, the community will come together and say, yeah, we've had our fun. It will be acceptable if you nerf us next season. Is that what I just heard you say? Because that yeah, has never happened in the history of any video game for any build ever. So, so <laughs> yes, 
but and hear me out here but, but it's, what it's, it's it's all of the other people who are just pissed off that there's a fun build you know how people are just angry when builds are fun and strong but it doesn't affect them in any way shape or form every single person playing diablo 4 right now everybody else will feel vindicated when it gets nerfed so like the the karmic net balance of how salty we are will will even out hmm. So yeah, so I yeah. I think that the average Joe playing a powerful build suddenly will attribute that entirely to them being way better at the game now than last season. <laughs> yeah, I think Cooper's right. It's a skill thing. So yeah. I I don't know what I like like so when Woody says he's expecting like well, you know the reasonable nerf. So I'm I'm assuming we're talking about dust devils. We're talking about maybe frozen orb a bit, and we're talking about. The bugged hurricane. Was there anything else that you were thinking other than those three? Yeah, we talked about the frosty strides and the elemental surge, so I definitely expect those to get either obliterated okay. or yep. removed. Okay, so with those gone, I was th I was thinking highest output. Like it, it just depends. It depends where dust doubles lands. I think it's possible that dust doubles is still the best build. I mean, Adam Jackson certainly seems to want to have it um, go that <laughs> it's way. It's gonna be a thing, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> It, it could be the strongest, but I was thinking, so you were having Barb 1, Druid 2. I was thinking, like, Necro or Barb 1 or 2. I was going to put Necro number 1, depending upon how badly they nerf Barb. And then whichever one else be second. And then, I don't know, if Frozen Orb doesn't get nerfed that much, is Druid really better than than a Frozen Orb Sorcerer? I mean, as some people were playing it a lot of different ways. Some people were playing it, I played it, like, Frozen Orb way, and it was very strong. It was just... Uh, you know, my only issue was survivability. My offense was insane. So in softcore, you don't really care about that. And though some people were playing like conjurations. And I think they went all the way to pit 200 as a as a conjuration sorcerer. I do agree with you. Like the the sentiment, the druids are pretty good. Like I don't think druids have this massive problem that people are pushing that narrative. But druids number two, I I don't I don't know. Druids number two. I I want to I mean, kind of point out that I think it's hilarious that they made minion scale a hundred percent, which for for the you know the the general player base, uh, I'm not sure they quite understand that it's, it's not like tripling your damage; it's like ten xing your damage because you're now getting full value from not just the base damage of like your weapon or whatever, but the int scaling, the modifier scaling. The crit chance, the, the everything, right? Everything is just suddenly way, way better. So, yeah. So basically, they 10x the damage of conjurations. They 10x the damage of minions. They 10x the damage of druid companions. And they didn't really touch it much past that. Isn't that kind of funny? It's like, it's like, yeah, maybe, maybe this is okay. 10x at at a zero. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it might it might be too much, and I think it wouldn't hurt to kind of like tune down minions a bit as well. Maybe not like you know completely destroy it or something, but yeah, like they definitely seem like very very strong. And I think a lot of people will not like the idea that you know necromancers is gonna be like you know the choice, like the recommendation by everyone. You know, making their tier list videos and saying play necromancers if you want to have an easy time in season four, because a lot of people just don't want to play minions. And I think necromancers is just. It it doesn't really sound like too like engaging as like a play style. It sounds like you can just kind of like AFK your way through half the game anyway. And I think it, they have to be very careful to you know it's fine to make minions good and make easy builds very good, but I think it's bad for the game in general if like the easiest game to play in the game is the best build in in the game as well because it will just turn yeah. off so many players. It's like you know if you like really brain AFK the entire way through and this is the best build, this is the meta, then we have a problem. I, I, I got to push back immediately. What if I told you that playing a minion necro properly is the most actions per minute I've played in Diablo 4? Okay, elaborate. Bar, bar none. You click every single skill on your skill bar every single time it's off cooldown, every single every single moment. Yeah, but Bone you can also not do any of right? that and you're still going to be like 80% as effective, no? Mm, I'd put you at like 50%. It, it, it's, it, I mean, it, it, comes to, it comes down to metrics that like the casual player base doesn't doesn't like tune into right like there are still some times where i have to make arguments about like animation speed and movement speed being the most important stats in the game so can you just like stand behind and just only like click curse in your golem and like sometimes 
use your ring of sacrilegious soul to like do corpse tendrils? Sure. Will you clear stuff? Sure. Are you going to clear it as fast as the one minute sort clear time? Of course not. And you're like, oh, but Mac, that's teleport. That's teleport. If you try real hard, you can cut, you can double your efficiency. And you are significantly slower, even if it is the most powerful build, if you are not playing it hard. Now, it, that's going to be a bit easier this season, but playing minions optimally is the most buttons I've clicked per second. So, yeah, so I, I'm sure that that's true. I thought. I'm sure that the highest level of minion gameplay, I mean, I just played it for three days. There, there's crazy things you can do. But I think what, what Woody said here is definitely kind of what applies to the general game. Like you just, like you just run, for, it's exactly what Macro just said. Just run forward and curse and activate your golem and almost everything in the game is going to die. And, and people are going to love it. Like Crip asked earlier, is, is that a problem? I have no problem with it. I, I have almost never, like, I'm sure there are examples, but in ARPG seasons, I always recommend, if you're going to be wrong one way or the other, for the love of God, be wrong in the, in the, in the favor of the player. So if Necrominions come out and it's just way too strong, you add it to zero, oh, you're mowing the lawn in pit 200, that is a better scenario than minions still suck in the minion patch. So I, I don't mind. It's okay. Let, like they made a, fu a fundamental change to it. In my opinion, another fundamental change is required. My minions are stupid. The only reason they're working is because they're strong. You put a zero there so they work, but I would you could take away the zero if they would just do their job. I feel more like a babysitter than the commander of the undead. I'm so upset at everything that they do all the time. I can't even break the gate in the nightmare dungeon. But I do think like when they get these basic systems in place and they go further, that Woody's point is going to be important that if Minion Necro rules the world for multiple seasons and literally you can just walk forward, curse and golem and get whatever percent of the efficiency, I think we have a problem there. Back to rat runs it is there. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's like a rat run. <laughs> I I don't um, I don't I don't disagree. I I, I really don't disagree. And, and and that's exactly like what like what you just said, Rex. That's why I said let us have it for one season, let everybody get what get their jollies off, and then let's make it realistic. And then you know let's let's you know once we have all that data, we can make more informed decisions. Yeah, I, I also agree with Rex. It's like okay, like if they're too strong for a while, sure, you know you can always fix it. But yeah, maybe it wouldn't hurt to like tune it down a little bit, you know, like some of the like mini specific stuff or whatever. But yeah, we'll see. I guess exactly what happens. If they're gonna be really powerful, I guess that's fine. Necros have also the time to shine. I mean, like like what Crip said earlier, it's not like Hoda Barb. It's not the same. Hoda Barb yeah. is a, another magnitude over Minion. If if they were both in the same season, we would put Barb number one easily. Okay, I think so I can move my... on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I, I did get to, to chip in here. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I think I've been the most Minion player of of the bunch so far in the actual seasons. Um. The the real issue with minions is I wouldn't even say so much. The, their AI is a problem, as Rack said, when it comes to hitting like non-monster enemies. Um, like if you think that's bad, it's 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 there's other really bad ones too. But yeah, that is like an issue that they should probably address. But un until they do address it, and until they do address like minion CC, I on one hand I don't think they will feel like that that powerful in most cases. Um, because, yeah, you're going to go up against a couple of rares that are just freezing your minions nonstop and your damage, especially if you're not using the the Bone Golem, and I think a lot of people won't know to. Uh, it's going to be bad. There's going to be zero, basically. Um, the other thing is, I think with minions probably surviving, at least you guys seem to think so, the nerfs that you're expecting. Um, wish I could have this kind of foresight, but anyway... Um, I think a lot of people will actually smash their heads into these frustrations. Like people are gonna tell them the best build is minions. They play minions and they're like, dude, my minions aren't attacking the gate. They like they're not attacking the thorns. Like these minions suck. They just sit frozen, and don't do anything. Right? So I think well, it will be a bit of an unfortunate case if it doesn't get addressed in some way. But ultimately, yeah, if like if they wanna do something crazy, like give me a way to give all my minions permanent unstoppable. 
Like, they can have half the damage. I'm good with that. They can probably have, like, 70% of the damage from what I was playing with, anyway. I guess my solution to this is I'm just not going to green light any build that has minions from macro on max roll that does not have a curse to direct them somewhere. <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh, no, you no. Hey, I, I can't stress this enough. My football field decrepify is going on every single build. You click it one time, you hit Lilith from Kyovashad. It is sick. Okay, perfect. Lilith then... is actually pretty close to Kyovashad, though. It's a waypoint away. All right, don't, don't <laughs> split hairs over here. All right, you got you to gotta fast travel to get to her. All right, that's far. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I want to move on from the necro topic and in general from the crafting. Again? Um, or do you just want to circle back to minions? No, I, I no, we we're, we're done. So I want to talk about Helltide. Um, we haven't really talked about that at all, and no one mentioned it in the overall impression. So what, what do you think about it? It's sick as hell. It's fun. It's just fun. I think they did it right, except for that sandworm, like literally knocking you out of the way every five seconds. I think it's like, I think they did a pretty good job with it. I actually kind of like that though, because it like it notifies you of its presence. Like, oh, you wanted to walk over here? Not today, sir. Just knocks you across the. I I honestly kind of like that. It's just like when it happens the third time, and I'm just like trying to get to a chest, and I don't care about cinders anymore. It's like, what if there was eight fallen here? I'm like, I mean, sure, I'll kill them too, boss. But like, they didn't need to be here. It's like, all right, I'll see you in a minute. I no, I I, I like it. I think I think like the blood maiden is really cool. You know, people are already calling for like they need to they need to buff her difficulty. We gotta remember that like sometimes undergeared people like show up to Helltide in World Tier Four a little bit too early, and they are just going to get put in the ground by these bosses. And uh, it also looks like there's a way that we'll be able to juice Helltide. I don't really understand how it works. There's that weird like uh, elixir that adds like monster level. So like they've already they've already incorporated at least some of that. Uh, people were finding them in the cellars, but like, um, you know, it, my only issue because I, I really think everything they added is just very good helltide actually feels like something that's fun you can do it in world tier one and world tier two and out level dopamine tunnels my only issue now is i'm having so much fun doing the helltide i have like three minutes left and i realize i need to go open up chests and if i don't hit all my chests because i'm sitting in a loading screen going to the other section my cinders go away and if we're bringing everything from the blood harvest over to helltide that thing that everybody loved one of the things that everybody loved is that all your materials carried over. So, like, let's just incorporate that into Helltide as well, in my opinion. One thing about Helltide, which I don't know if you guys tried this or not, but I tested, like, leveling, and leveling was way better in Helltide than Dopamine Tunnels. But I'll tell you one thing that I think is incorrectly tuned. And I, I keep in mind, I'm playing Minion Necro. I'm literally born for this. So... I do I, I do the events and I just I just obliterate them. I got minions everywhere. I have infinite corpse explosions. Like I am actually God. And then it spawns the Hell Tide Commander in World Tier Two. I cannot tell you how long of a boss fight that is, even as a minion necro. And they are like incredible single target. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just like. Every time I spawn in, in a low-level event, unless there's other people there with you, obviously there's other people, then maybe you can get the boss down. But if you're by yourself leveling up in low-level Helltide, you do the event, the boss spawns to finish the event, you just leave. You just don't fight it because it just has so much HP. I'm just like, okay, there is no way mathematically it's worth it for me to sit here and wail on this guy. And it depends. Like some of them die pretty quickly, but some of them is like Wait, you're fighting did, Ragnaros. Did they like mega buff the Hatter Commanders or what? I'm only talking about this in World Tier One or Two. Like now ah. that they introduced it at the low levels, when you're a low level shitter and you got nothing, so you yeah, got your little yellows on. I'm playing Minion Necro. Okay. Like I am born to kill one monster. I, maybe they just yeah. uh, kind of forget to tune them. So I, I, I tried some early game Hell Tides. And I saw that the blood main was like super easy. Like she just died super fast in World Tier Two. But yeah, maybe they forgot about the commanders or something from the events. And I, I never saw. I don't think I saw like the world boss there or summoned her. Did you have anybody fighting with you, or were you fighting by yourself? No, she just she's just squishy in World Tier Two. Like I, I've tried her. Like I just summoned her, and you know, at level twenty or level thirty or something. And yeah, I was just able able to like blast her down in like in a minute or something. So. Yeah. And I think it's I think like the Helltide Commander is like at least a two minute fight for me. <laughs> and in two minutes I can just leave and go to a whole nother event. So 
Yeah, that sounds uh, like too long. I mean, generally, Helltide was pretty good. It's just, you know, there's always something happening on the screen. They made it so you automatically pick up the cinders now and just walk it over them. I mean, there's more move speed on characters, which I think innately makes Helltide a lot more fun. Um, it seems all right. It's just still not something I really want to be doing, like, forever and ever. So it's still kind of an intermediary. But, yeah, I guess the people that do durial farming like crazy, I guess they... They are doing it forever, so I guess they're happy. I actually don't because it gets like so many more materials now in the future, right? So, and also like they, they added the resplendent sparks, so now you can like salvage. I mean, this was already a season three thing, right? But you can salvage the other uniques and then you can try to uh, craft one that you want and so on. And like with the overall like extra income in materials, I think it's gonna be really nice now. Like you do health diets, you know, like while leveling up, and you know, maybe a bit after that, after 100. But it's like so efficient and so fast. I think you're gonna be just fine, you know, farming hell tides. I don't know, maybe a total of twenty hours in a season or something, and and, and you're kind of done, I guess. You also need the like, cool part. Sorry, go ahead. I was just like mentioning, like you know, also don't need the forgotten souls from there anymore. You get them now by default. You don't need the uh, fiend roses anymore. So it's just kind of like you just blast, have fun. You don't worry about clicking stuff on the ground. So that's also like one thing I, I kind of enjoy, just like a blast. And there's constantly something happening. Like health that actually feels very active. In fact, almost too active. It's like, you know, I, I just want to go open my chest, you know, on my way there. I get like ambush, I get the worm, I get everything. And yeah, it's kind of cool that this stuff is happening. But sometimes I'm like, you know, I just wanted to kind of grind my way over to this area. So it's like a horror usually do, trying to get towards that chest while getting some cinders. And it takes me like 20 minutes to get there to the opposite side because there's constantly stuff. And I really don't want to just ride past it. <laughs> so it's like uh, too tempting, you know? But yeah. The, I, I think the cool part about it is that um, because I, I hated just doing like dungeon grinds for leveling. I think it's like the least the least fun I have during the beginning of a season. Helltide lets you do whispers. It gets you gear, especially in the early world, like uh, world tiers where like you just go pop open a chest and you get like like your first like two or three legendaries, you put them on and now you actually have like mobility and some damage. So it's like really rewarding in the early game. Um, I did try it out with like no tempering, no master working, just like a base build that like I just created the character and I like put together a build and the maiden was like a bit of a challenge while you found out what she was doing. Once you put on any good stats, like you obliterated her, right? I think there was one point that the hell spawn came in, but I didn't know he had showed up. I just saw the loot fall out of this guy because I killed him too fast. So like, I think there's some world where like they can make it a little bit more challenging, but you're getting a ton of resources. You're mostly having fun because you're just kind of killing monsters the whole time. You're getting decent gear upgrades. And then it's like, oh, I have a couple of minutes of downtime. I'll go turn in my tree of whispers. I'll go check something from my codex or I might like head over to a world boss or whatever. I think it just fits much nicer into the overall early game progression and like the overworld progression part of the season start. I just need those cinders to carry over, like dropping off at the end of a hell tie with like 200 cinders. Cause like, I just didn't run over to a big enough chest by the last minute feels like so bad. And I don't know why I'm being, I, I, I call it being punished and it's a little bit dramatic, but like I completed your challenge. I did the stuff. I got my currency, but I don't get to spend it cause I didn't, stop playing the game long enough to go open up a chest or too much stuff spawned in the way and it like you're going to tell me i'm going to stop killing these monsters to go get like it just seems a little bit like counterintuitive and i feel like there's a very very easy solve for it and then i basically have no complaints about the system it's certainly a popular you know solve that you're suggesting i guess because a lot of people would probably like that but what about they just make the living steel scale of the cost of the chest and they remove the living steel chest because I think that's kind of like the, the bigger problem here is that you have to get to 275 and you never want to open any of the other chests because they don't give you five living steel. They only give you one, no matter the cost. And it's just kind of stupid. And why would you ever open another chest, even though Helltide was supposedly designed for the target farming in the game, but you don't actually do that because living steel exists. And, you know, why, not, why don't you just go around and open like 75 chests if you really want to? It, the... And we were talking about this on stream. It's like, uh, there's a couple different options. Like, what if there's a cinders merchant in towns or whatever? Or what if the chests stayed around for a, a, until the next Helltide, but, like, the monsters weren't there? There's a lot of things that are, like, are purely mechanically, like, sure, you could do these things. And they would technically solve this problem. 
but like a vendor in town no i want to do my hell tide while i'm in the hell tide like i want to open up my chest while i'm in the hell tide i want to kill the monsters while i'm in the hell tide i don't like want to go to a vendor outside or what if it was a chest where you could like pay more you could like open it multiple times or you could like pay more and get like a scaling reward out of it that's okay but like literally how do they make that ui when this game needs to be played on console too and it, it, it all just comes down to i want to open the chests but i want to spend 55 minutes killing monsters so i don't have time to open up the chest i have to stop playing the game to go just click the chest to just keep going and i don't know i just it feels like it doesn't need to be over engineered in any in any other way really i mean so, i played a few a few games where they had like limited limited time like uh, gathering events and they just have like a conversion mechanic at the end like it could just like pop out random chest loot for how many would otherwise go to waste or something like i mean i think there are a few the thing is that if you if you like do what you said macro with like just carry over the cinders to the next hell tide then you still have the same problem that you have to stop killing monsters out of those 55 minutes and eventually go to a chest and open all your chests and if you have like 2000 cinders then you're gonna go right around for 10 minutes opening chests so you still spend the same amount of time opening all the chests in fact probably more if you do it that way compared to just efficiently grinding away through the zone as you go towards the chest open that chest grind away to the next chest and open that one so you basically it's just so, but like what why is that even a problem really is my like if 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 it's i have to kill the monsters and i have to open up the chests why can't i choose to like prioritize doing one and then the other one versus intermingling the two the two activities like if it is the same thing at the end of the day why doesn't the player get to make that choice about like i only want to take the first 10 minutes of this hell tide open up my chest and then get back to dungeons or whatever i was doing it's so... just like yeah I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 I, I, I ran out of gas anyways. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think Woody makes a good point. Like, you, you, still, you, you still have the same problem. You could do a vendor. Another thing that you could do, which might be simple, is when the hell tide ends in the five minutes of downtime, for the five minutes, leave the chests up. Go loot them. Yeah, some people just said that in my chat as well. Yeah, it seems good. But... I'll play devil's advocate even further, and I I, I don't feel very strongly in this. I, I I don't care. Like they could they could change it. They could have them carry over. They could have you farm it in the five minutes of downtime. I personally I think I like how they do it, and the reason why is I have to make a plan. I don't go to Helltide, and what I do in almost every game mode is I run around and I just slay shit, and that's pretty much it. And I don't think at all. The thing that I kind of like about Helltide is I don't have to make a big plan, but I have to make a little bit of a plan. And here's how here's how it goes for me, because I was trying to like speed level. So I arrive there. I got 55 minutes. I play to about minute 15 and then I'm hitting tab and I'm fighting my way toward the chest and I'm trying to spend my resources efficiently. I think creating these kinds of little like mini games within a hell tide is actually good for the game i don't mind it at all i i'm a person who likes puzzles i like little itty bitty challenges like that that enhances my experience so i kind of like that if i don't make a good plan that i am penalized for it again uh, i probably lost like a thousand followers minimum for saying that but i actually don't mind how they've done it as it is. Another thing about it, it, I'm sorry, another thing part of the puzzle is, is if I have 80 cinder, or if I have like 480 cinders and I only have eight minutes left, then I really, really stop prioritizing monsters because I only have to get 20 cinders to get the fifth chest. I'll never get to 600 cinders. There's like a bunch of different mind games that you can, that they kind of develop if you care at all um, I guess like the casual people who are just not paying attention at all and just slaying monsters and have a thousand cinders and then check and then they say, oh, I have to open 10 chests in three minutes. I get it. That feels bad for them. But I really don't mind the system that they currently have, if I'm being honest. I mean, I think they're improving Helltide. I think there weren't like too many major issues in the PTR version. Probably what limited time they have to change stuff from PTR to season season four is not going to help tight, I think. I think you basically played 
the version of Helltide you'll be playing next season in the PTR? Yeah, Helltide is not the biggest problem at all. They got we got minions that can't open gates, Crip. <laughs> I got a message from uh, one of my mods. Uh, apparently, uh, he has noticed how much people are gatekeeping minion builds. Like, if Hoda is doing 100x anything else, it's like, well, yeah, but it's it's barbs. But then if minions maybe might be the best build, <laughs> burn it down. No. I mean... You know minions, they're easy to play. You know, you, just, you only click, like, two buttons. I know one said that how, Hoda is How hard dare to play. they have a good character at the end of the day? Like, I... I would definitely also advocate for Hoda nerfs, you know, even even after those nerfs, I would say they can probably still nerf Hoda up more. So, you know, like yeah, that that is that, that is that is fine. So I was not in the buff Hoda camp or the buff Barb camp anyway. One of the one of the funniest reactions I got when we first saw like the the patch notes for the PTR. You know, obviously, you know, Rob's out there doing the calculations, you know, you know, trying to see through the matrix. And he and he shows up in my stream, he's like, yeah. We lost like a hundred X damage, like top end Hoda builds are only going to do like 90 million damage per Hoda. <laughs> and I went, I don't, he's like, no, you don't understand. Like it's really nerfed. I'm like, I, you do not have to say this in front of me. I'm sorry. Do you, he's like, well, you gotta like weapon swap. You gotta do this little dance. I'm like, yeah, you like click five buttons and you do a hundred million damage to a creature. I, I'm sorry. Here's my very, very tiny little violin. <laughs> It's it's but ramen noodles for for Rob from here on out. If it's only ninety he's, million, he's not going to make it. Yeah, he's not going to yeah. make it. No, yeah, I it's, mean, it's kind of he, funny he because Rob. Yeah, Rob plays too much Bob. I think you know, like some of his opinions and some of his takes. I'm like, oh yeah, this this should be buffed or this should be like you know, on Bob. You know, he's playing Bob and he says, okay, this should be buffed. This should be buffed. And then like, yeah, I think I think Rob, you play too much Bob. You know, <laughs> like it's just like, <laughs> my opinion about that. If you think this needs a buff, you're playing too much Barb. <laughs> it, it's 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 more so like the like the the chat that came over with it. They're like, oh my god, sing you know, start singing your your uh, your eulogies for Barb. And I'm like, guys, they have they have four weapons. They're gonna make it. It's gonna be okay. They're gonna they're gonna get through this one. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think Barb's will be just fine, even with like seven different nerfs that are expected to come for them. So it's fine. <laughs> So kind kind of a kind of a segue from the idea of hell tides. How how much do you think people are going to hate running nightmare dungeons unless there is like a strictly better nightmare dungeon in season four, like vaults? Like it's purely homework now at this point, right? It's literally just to get glyph experience. Why why would you do it ever? Uh, well, there are reasons to do it actually, which is they're also the best source of loot in the game by far. Like they just drop the most items. And honestly, personally, after running a season of vaults, I'm really excited to actually see bosses again for once in my life. So that's kind of cool. And um, I mean, if you look at like how much I've changed Nightmare Dungeons in the past, and now they've made like you know objectives pick up in like a half a second, and uh, you know that kind of stuff. Like Nightmare Dungeons actually feel okay. I think you know most of the, of the shitty objectives are removed, or like you know this is like not really annoying anymore because everything is fast. You blast through them, you get tons of loot. You get a good XP, and I think for most people, like most people, don't like Nightmare Dungeons for some reason because there is, you know, an objective to do, and it holds you back from doing whatever you want to do for some reason. But I don't think this is really such a concern anymore once people actually play it again. I think a lot of people just haven't played Nightmare Dungeons in too long to really understand that it's not such a huge deal anymore. But that's like maybe it's just my opinion. So as someone who ran every Nightmare Dungeon. Uh, and tested it, and someone who ran the events. Uh, first of all, the most important point is I agree with Woody. We all miss Tomb Lord. We don't <laughs> have enough. To we haven't had enough Tomb Lord. That's the <laughs> that's the most important thing. But another thing about Nightmare Dungeons is they're far more rewarding than they have been in the past, at least XP wise, because the dungeon events are have been tuned up tremendously. So, for example when the 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 pit gives you about 7 million or 70 million xp per hour this is with no elixir or whatever and the best nightmare dungeon running it gives you 74 so the pit beats pretty much every nightmare dungeon but a lot of the events pay you about 150 million xp per hour that spawn in the nightmare dungeons 
So one of the most valuable things you can get in the entire game now is to go into a nightmare dungeon and look for anything. A cursed chest, a cursed well, a cursed shrine, um, or an actual side event. Also, I don't know if you guys saw this, but in nightmare dungeons, they can now spawn goblin packs, which should be is another massive loot explosion. So uh, I think nightmare dungeons are going to be just fine. And Woody, they did not give us half a second clicks. It's 0.75 clicks. We want so, it to be sorry. instant cast. <laughs> we want it to be instant cast. And another thing is not all of them are instant cast, by the way, while we're talking about it. The levers are not, or, or the not 0.75. The levers are not 0.75. For example, there's other ones that I r complained about. And another thing that they didn't do is in the dead center of the dungeon, they still have the 30 second event slay all that pays zero XP. Zero. It doesn't matter how many monsters Don't you kill. You get, you get like a small amount when you complete it. You get a small amount when you complete it. But the best way to the best way to play that. To play that, if you play Minion Necro, wouldn't apply here. But let's say you're playing like Hodabar or anything that requires resources. The best way to play that dungeon is stand in the corner, you know, Blair Witch in the corner, have full resources, and just let the event end and don't try it all. Don't kill anything because it's a huge waste of time. So that event is still there. Sorry, I ran a lot of Nightmare Dungeons. <laughs> no, I ran that's, a lot. That's definitely of them. good points in making. I think. And uh, if yeah. there's like actually like some objectives missing from like the the you know click time reduction, that should definitely be fixed. I think like there's no reason to keep some longer than others or something. But yeah, to me it it like I ran some you know just like you know tried builds in T100s or whatever, found some that still fear, and it definitely felt better than before. And you know it's also like if you really hate time reduction so much, you don't really have to do them very much in the future anyway. It's like I don't know they're buffing XP by I don't know how much. They didn't say how much. I expect minimum 20% buff, maybe more. And this means that if you found like T100 dungeons, which many builds will be able to do easily in the future, you're probably looking at like six, seven, maybe eight runs per glyph to 21. Like to max out a glyph entirely from 1 to 21. It will probably be somewhere in the range of like half to one hour of blasting, depending on how fast you go. And I think that's not really too much to ask for like gearing up a character, like, you know, do a bunch of glyph levels and, you know, then you're done with the nightmare dungeon system. Are we sure they're dropping vaults? I feel like vaults don't really have that much to do with the league mechanic. Like, I don't know why vault can't be. Just yeah, vaults are going. I think they put they put the vaults in Helltide. They, well, the part of it they put the the spinny. I mean, the trap mechanic. Like the, like the survive uh, yeah. the trap thing. By the way, while we're talking about it. Helltide cinders are red. The Helltide ground is red. The Helltide meteors are red. The flame jet is red. Then they have a, an indication for an attack. It's red. And then that attack is red. And then the red monsters have red fire sticks, the shamans, and they shoot fireballs that are red. I mean, I just, I just don't get it, man. Like, you, 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 I'm going to play you, you... Firewall Sark. You missed, yeah. you missed out on a couple of them, Rax, because also in the pit, in the boss arenas, a lot of them have really cool aesthetic lighting that flashes red in between pillars. And then the secondary bosses that they spawn are also red, and the indicators for their attacks are also red. Uh, I did not realize, like, how much of this game just, like, hates my dad, who is colorblind, red-green. Uh, but they sure do, man. It's insane. There were so many times I just literally didn't know a boss was attacking me because their red fire thing was inside of a red summon circle and the flashing lightning through the window was red and white. And I was like, why is that happening? This seems overdone. Yeah, it's a, it's it's actually wild bananas. There's like three colors in this game. It's like Call of Duty in the early 2000s. Yeah, I'm not colorblind and I find it obnoxious. Like I, the, the part where I like drew like you draw the line at Uber Lilith and I saw that they changed the ghost to blue. That's nice. That's one thing. But the part where I drew the line is where I saw on the PTR, they put the vault traps in Helltide and everything was red. So it's like, you have to dodge them. I'm Again, I'm trying to play hardcore here. I have to dodge this. I can't see jack shit. Yeah. I, I, I gotta say, I, I agree with this, actually. Like, the visual clarity in general, I feel, is like a major problem in this patch. Like, we talked about, you know, tempering and like the crazy 100 projectiles that Crip mentioned, and it's fun to do that stuff. But yeah, you play like a frozen Opsoki, you see nothing on the ground. Like, 
it's, it's not even like a problem of the indicators, it's just like the problem of the builds, just like being way too flashy, and there's like 20 frozen ults exploding at any time, and you just can't see anything. And then you have the boss arenas, where sometimes you have a gray on gray, like the like try to see like the tornado spawn in like, you know, a gray arena or something, and then the tornadoes fl float around the monster you. Like, that was definitely a problem. I also noticed this on like Vashan, for example, when I did the Uber Vashan fight, like the indicators for the, the dance, it's so hard to see because it's always the same color and it also like lingers a bit and before it completely disappears while well, the next one is already happening and they overlap in some cases and <laughs> you have to distinguish the one that is despawning from the one that is coming and yeah there's like a lot of little problems like that that i have to solve i think wait are and you then... actually playing a build that has to consider boss mechanics i thought you just bring a hoda barb <laughs> Yes, I am. I was actually specifically trying all of the tormented bosses with like a non crazy boss killer build uh, to see the mechanics. So I did like five minute fights or something to to learn the mechanics and stuff. Oh man, I sure fought Uber Varshan on a build that couldn't do enough damage to break through his barrier uh, for a <laughs> solid fifteen minutes. It's the hardest I've ever played in this video game. Unironically, <laughs> I got him. I got him to thirty percent, and then I ran out of potions. But like, I. I I, I actually enjoyed it for what like for what it was worth. But to your exact point, Woody, it gets so much worse. Like uh, then you add blighted corpse explosion onto the ground, and then you cast Shadow Blood Wave that actually still just covers the whole ground. So now you're like standing on top of a trap with a boss mechanic. You can't see the ground. I have 30 minions running around me. And I'm looking <laughs> at it, and this is not a diss. I cannot stress this enough. I'm not some kind of one ARPG Andy. It looks like every like super end game map blasting build on PoE, just like spinning through, annihilating everything, and just physically unable for me to determine what's happening on the screen in front of me. And I've done nothing but play this game for a year straight. Like this this patch, they took like something that I consider like very important to the game is like it's it's aesthetic, and they just like said screw that giant cheetos flying across the screen who cares you can't see nothing there's just bugles coming out of this barbarian at rapid speed like the game looks silly like it looks unattractively dumb i really dislike how much stuff they've added that just like i really dislike like you know like corpse tendrils that are as thick as you know the entire character going across the entire screen it looks so right. goofy Thicker, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. You can get it so big that it doesn't even show the tendrils. It just shows this giant black splash. It's just like this splash of ichor on the ground, and then everything gets pulled in because it's literally too big. Um, I it, it, like this shouldn't be that important to me. I just think that the game, like one of the strongest things that the game has going for it, is that I think it's a very beautiful video game. Like I think it quite literally is a very good looking video game. And I think that you can have very powerful effects without it looking like a clown fiesta. Like some kid just like figured out Photoshop for the first time is just like dropping stuff on it. And I'm like really, really un I, I think it's a little bit unacceptable to a certain point. I mean, it's probably something they need to consider moving forward in general, but I have to say it's not something that even crossed my mind playing the PTR for like a day and a half. Just, I don't know. It and if, if you start pushing the pit at a kind of 50 plus and you get one set by every possibility you don't dodge properly then you will understand <laughs> like yeah but i don't know i i feel like diablo 4 never really had particularly good visual clarity and neither does any other arpg it's just kind of like i don't know i, have I mean it could be better that's that's what we were saying right it should it should be improved right. or should be worked on I don't know. Like, I mean, like There's, it... the, the RPGs that have really good clarity, they have red circles under mechanics you need to walk out of. I would prefer that less. I think the main thing here is like, especially when you get like into the really high pit areas, they have to find a way. Like the important thing that's happening is the boss mechanic, and it just blends with everything that you're currently doing. They need to find a solution for that because if you if you get hit by anything unless you have an invulnerability or some crazy crazy mechanic that's probably not intended that they're going to nerf anyway you're going to get killed in one hit you're going to have to dodge it so i can't i can't dodge what i can't see i think it gets even worse too like um the the boss arenas in the pit need to be so large because they have like Lilith and three other people all trying to get you simultaneously. 
that you could be so far away from the boss that you can't see them even with max zoom out. So like you can't see the tells from their effects and then like something just kind of shoots onto the screen. Um, I don't know why we only got like a 2% increase in our zoom out. I had like a before and after picture where I could like barely see the entrance of a doorway and then I could barely see a light source on the other side and I'm like, cool. That's all the zoom out I got. I really appreciate that. Thank you. But like, yeah, I don't know. We're just, like, we're moving further and further away from the game having visual clarity. And it's clearly an important thing where like they tried to fix things like Blighted Corpse Explosion in the past. That's just very weird that I feel like we're going like two steps back when I already think it could have been better. Especially with like, like four different Blighted bosses. Blighted Corpse Explosion to was such an outlier though. Like... Well, now it's, now it's Tornado uh, like Barbarian. You know what I mean? It's just like Watch yeah. a NATO barbarian play the game. Yeah, I, I know. Physically can't see anything, so it's like, what are we doing here? I, th I think they 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 mentioned that the there's too many projectiles flying everywhere. So I'm I'm expecting that to be toned down for the start of season four. Well, they'll probably just limit the tornado barbarian to one tornado then, right? <laughs> yeah, just one tornado that covers the whole screen. <laughs> you <laughs> actually can't Maelstrom see anything, barbarian. <laughs> This is actually, this is, um, this might be a unique, uh, like insight that you might be able to give us here, Woody, uh, because so much power is coming back onto like items in general. Like we're moving a lot of our power onto items, um, on the rogue where you get to temper three weapons. I, I experienced something interesting on the Necromancer where I felt like my Paragon was much less impactful to what my build was doing because all the numbers there are very static and they don't scale much larger and they're just kind of like a couple multipliers. How do you feel about? having multiple weapons where you can temper stuff on and so much more power going on to items as opposed to other systems. Um, well, I mean, Rogue is most likely the weakest class despite that, no matter what. Like, Rogue is just, like, not really as over 2 and has, like, broken mechanics like other classes. So it's not really a, an issue, but if they ever go, you know, back to Rogue and, like, you know, do, like, the Rogue patch where they suddenly add, like, crazy stuff all over the place, then it could become a problem if they don't do like some general tempering or itemization changes. Like, you know, we talk a lot about the barb, the free weapons or four weapons. And in general, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to just like lower those class specific multipliers that those classes have, especially barb, like, you know, to lower values. Like, you know, there's like class specific aspects and so on that you can put on the weapons, the tempers that you can put on the weapons for barb specifically should be lowered, maybe similar for rogue, so that you kind of like reach the same overall values and have like feel kind of similar. On the other hand, you know, it could make it so that, you know, rogues just benefit more from tempers and you can actually reach 100% chance to cast your projectiles twice and other classes only reach 60. And that's just a rogue thing, you know, why not? So, um, you know, as long as you balance around that and, you know, give them, give them like some, some negative power somewhere else, it's, it's totally fine to do it. So it didn't feel like rogue was like overtuned because they had more tempers or more stats on their weapons or anything like that. The, the biggest thing that I felt was like, Okay, I'm in my Paragon boards. I'm going to put in three Paragon points. It's going to gain me 30 additive damage. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I did that. And now I'm going to walk over to this blacksmith and I'm going to put my, my amulet or my weapon in. And I'm going to add 200 additive bone spirit damage to my weapon. Okay, cool. yeah, I, I get what you mean. So in that case, I have to say, yeah, the number of additive damage that we can get is, is crazy. Especially with the weapons, because it can put, put so much of it on the offensive slots. And Rogue does have more than usual. And I agree. I think in general, like, tempering just probably just needs a nerf across the board. And, like, anything. Like, we talked about the size. We talked about the projectiles, the screen clutter. Like, you know, basically anything could need a nerf there at some point, I feel. It, it kind of feels to me that, you know, with tempering, they've kind of just, like, introduced the whole system. And they completely forgot about master working. And, you know, this is why all the values are so crazy. Like, this is kind of like what I feel happened. And, uh, you know, if it just, like, slash everything in half, it would still be extremely powerful and not as crazy and, like, completely ridiculous in some cases. So, yeah, there, there's definitely some tuning needed. And I feel like the crazy amounts of additive damage that we get compared to, like, for example, other choices like glyphs is definitely noticeable in that case. Yeah, for example, I noticed myself, like, on the rogue, instead of, like, trying to, like, scale glyphs to the maximum, I would just always go for minimum, just get the secondary effect and move on. And I was completely changing the way I built Paragon boards. I invested a lot more in defenses. So, you know, once I, you know, I was talking about the philosophy shift earlier with defenses. Once I actually understood that in, in the PDR, I was doing a lot better as well. So it's just like the new meta of making a Paragon board, I feel. Like you kind of like ignore 
the nodes, you go more for the glyphs, and I don't know, that's just how it goes, I guess. I honestly I mean, like probably go for the percent HP a lot more now as well. Yeah. I think it just like as an overarching thing though for the amount of changes that they've made, I think a lot of this is just it's just totally fine to release mm -hmm. in season four. Like a lot of this is like the super in depth, like where is the power coming from here or there? How do we tune things? But I think a lot of it for where they have it right now, if anything is going to be a little bit on the too powerful side and that's never really a problem players almost never complain that they're too powerful and we are going to have to solve at least one equation next season it looks like which is defense so yeah I, I totally agree with that as well it's like it's not a huge issue like for some reason they put it on the known issues list before the ptr came out players may be unable to reach their paragon bonuses on the randos or something that was apparently supposed to a, a bug. And I was like, yeah, guys, you just removed all of the stats from the gear. There's no all stats. There's no, like, you know, strength on the, on the sword or whatever. Like, you, of course, you can't do it. But that's just, like, how it works now. You know, this is a feature, I guess. Like, why is it a known bug? Like, it's kind of weird. So maybe they're going to yeah. do something. But I think it's, like, also, like, something they shouldn't waste time on, to be honest. Well, uh, another thing that I think, I mean... Uh... Hopefully, certainly Blizzard knows this, and we just, I mean, I do, I do not have this information, but we do know that there's going to be, like, some kind of additional crafting uh, mechanics, and there's an expansion coming. I would not rush to make changes to balance the current state of the game. They've got to consider what are they, what are they implementing going forward. Because if they fix it all right now and then the new system comes out and it obsoletes what they already fixed, then we're having them do duplicate work and we, we're already so far behind in development. A lot of people are already considering this the release of the game. It's finally out of beta, ha ha ha. So because it's okay releasing right now, all of these are godly observations and things that we should you know, it'd tell Blizzard where we're getting all the our power from and what we're ignoring and okay, we obsoleted half of the Paragon board or whatever. But I hope to God that they take a more holistic view of like their roadmap and make changes that are gonna just work that they don't have to keep redoing. Because if we keep redoing stuff, we're gonna get exactly the same position that we were already in and God, I don't want that to happen again. I mean, realistically, I'm, I'm, oh, sorry. Okay, up. As long as they do like the double development team alternating seasons, there's going to be so much just scrapping things that they've like, I think they're really going to struggle to meaningfully build on systems. Um, I, I don't, don't think so at all. Works. Actually, I don't, I don't think the alternating system is bad because they give, it gives them more time to generally like, you know, iron out the season. And I think they're mostly working on the theme, you know, like the season, like, you know, new quest lines and the, the mechanics and stuff like that, the nightmare vaults and I don't think this has much to do with like what so, the, the state of the game is and the balance. So this this whole thing where when a new season comes in, the previous season goes completely in the dumpster for a game that doesn't have enough content in it is really bad in my opinion. And the reason they do that is because they don't have the same devs working on it. That's why we get like a super tiny update to keep it almost in its in its spiritual sense, like some some league mechanic. Um and I, I, I think this early on in development, I think that has really like been quite problematic for them. Um, I, th I think the only reason they're able to do significant changes with itemization is because they've kind of paused that system to do it. I think that's why what? they're so long in between this season. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I see that pretty, pretty problematic moving forward, and I see that as pretty problematic in like building seasonal content permanently in the game. So one thing that Blizzard, I think, shared in the partner discord was they said that the they understand where the narrative came from, that there's like an even and an odd team, and that's how it's that's how they make their seasons. But they said that's actually not how it works. They said, I think in the next campfire, they're going to clarify how it really works. But to Crip's point, I, I'll tell you something that for me really surprised me. This, I think, was this like high level idea was a miss. So he says, like, okay, they don't bring back the actual season. They only bring back a snippet of it in its in its spiritual form. Okay, so for me, 
the most entertaining season so far was the vampire powers. And so they said, okay, we're going to pick, pick a couple of vampire powers and bring them back. That for me missed a huge part of the point that was fun about it. So we got the stuff, we got the vampire stuff in the hell tide and we got a couple of vampire powers back. But the thing that I'm missing here is I had fun leveling up my vampire powers. I didn't like the UI of it. The UI sucked of clicking back and forth and back and forth. But it felt so good to start off with a level one Hemo, which helped me in leveling, and then to work my way forward and level it up. And then I finally max it out at level three, and then I'm feeling good. This is what they keep removing. They keep removing the things to work on. We're not working on pets. Not that I like the pet, but let's pretend that we did like the pet. That's gone. I'm not working on my vampire powers. That's gone. You know, I'm not working with the malignant hearts anymore. You just threw them on a ring. That doesn't give me really content. I just find one thing, and then that's the only thing that came back from it. If they have, like, a progression system that feels good, that they can implement into the game, that would increase player play time. This is why PoE is so good for like the people that invest the time into the game. There's so many ways to develop your character that you, it's hard to get bored in that game. And I really wish Blizzard would take a look at the whole idea of leveling up these themes rather than just giving us a piece of it and just handing it to us. Yeah, I guess there could be like ways how they could bring back like, you know, some of these things without like overly power creep in the game, right? For example, okay, you can still put like a mini vampire power on your glove or something. And then you can like rank it up, you know, as you use that glove and you farm certain things, you farm like vampires, maybe it absorbs the, the blood of the vampires and then it gets stronger or something, right? You could kind of do something like that, I guess. I think what they're actually doing in the future though is that you know, once they have actually built a few season themes that we have seen now, they're not bringing them back immediately, but I could definitely very well see them, like, make something like, you know, similar to an Atlas Passive Tree from PoE. Not like the tree itself, but the, the idea of you can customize the content that you're playing, like Nightmare Dungeons, most likely. It's probably going to be, like, the main kind of, like, blast mode kind of content that they're going to focus on here, or maybe some other instance content, maybe the pit, who knows. But let's just say Nightmare Dungeons, and you kind of customize it, and you can say, okay, I want to see Millennium monsters there, and these Millennium monsters can drop a certain thing. and Or I want, you know, maybe get like Millennium events more often, or, you know, something like that. Maybe sometimes the boss is replaced with like some Millennium boss. Or, uh, you know, likewise, you can do the same with the vampires. So sometimes there's like more vampires showing up, extra packs of vampires show up in your dungeons, they drop the zero blood. Or, you know, there's like the constructs that are suddenly invading the dungeon dungeons and there's like, you know, a portal of them is popping out. And I guess there could be like, you know, many things that are like PoE mechanics that they could actually throw in there once they have actually built a bit of like a baseline of this stuff. And then they're going to start adding on to that. And for now, it's just like not there yet. So this is kind of like what I think is going to happen. My 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 major concern there because okay, like the reason why theoretically the reason why the developers are taking this path is because the very vocal player base said hey we don't want perpetually bloating systems in the game um and like i think a really good example is torchlight infinite right i actually really like torchlight infinite i think it's like a very fun game to play i like it's crafting i like it's gameplay i felt like every hour i was playing torchlight infinite on a season start a new ui would open it would say hey here's your dream ship mechanics <laughs> delver and this one you got to level up this one with the the prizes of nal granar and i'm like chat what is nal granar and like what's it so like <laughs> and it was like oh well oh, that one's left over from last season and you get them from doing this thing but don't worry about that one because it's not that very powerful or i'm always reminded of, of playing like a poe league start with teo and I walk up to a shrine and I'm like, what's this shrine? And I click it. He goes, oh, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. There's monsters and I'm killing them. He's like, yeah, but you don't care about that currency. Like, that's not going to be worth. So like, it, 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 it's, I would like walk into all these systems and people who know what they're talking about are like, oh, don't do that. That's, that's garbage. And it's like, how do you avoid that? But keep blood harvest. And how do you avoid that? But we leave the vaults in. like how I, I don't think a game has figured it out well. I think you either do alienate new players to a certain extent to give people more stuff to do, or you simplify the gameplay and you always make it the same loop, but with uh, more foundational changes to it. And it just takes longer to ramp up to having enough content. Like what is, 
what is the perfect balance between those two things? So PoE has a lot of uh, added content based on like modifying an item a certain way, and that certain way is not like, hey, you do double damage now. It's like much more nuanced than that a lot of the time. Um, okay, yeah, it gives you like alternative ways of making an item, right? So that's basically what you mean, like. No, sometimes they have just unique unique things about them. Um, like, I don't know, you can get like synthesized implicits and even the top, like the very, very, very top, like casual play will never even see half the stats on one, triple affix, implicit items. None of them double the power of your character. We're talking about like, you know, an extra like 10% more damage or something. And then, yeah, if you have that in like every slot, it's quite a bit. But that's the reason it kind of is able to build upon that stuff. My main criticism with, with Diablo 4 is that, like, so much of it is, is wasted. Like, I can't believe they're not bringing back vaults, I'll be honest. I, I don't understand that at all. Vaults just seemed like a different way to Nightmare Dungeon, and I preferred it to Nightmare Dungeons by the end. Um, why can't vaults st stay in the game? Like, what? what part of the game is breaking there. Yeah, okay, we're not going to keep the pet. Sure. But like, and, and there, there are examples of this happening where it just, it doesn't make sense that they're deleting it. Um, hell, even the vampire zone takeover, they can just leave that crap in and delete the vampire powers. It's just like a fun way to get like a few early pieces of gear. Like what's, what's the harm in having it in the game? It's not really that bloated. I don't know. It, we're like we're talking about a game here that maybe up until very recently was really lacking things to do. Like the, the end game for for hardcore players was was group killing Duriel and and killing. I I use that word loosely because we're talking about one big bonk from a barbarian in one second killing. I don't know. Like in, in that game, they're they're deleting content that they make. And I think again, I want to circle back. I think they're deleting the content they make is because um they have different dev teams working on different patches. They're not even really aware of what they what works and what they should be keeping. Right? That's like something that they maybe glance over months later. And I, I, I can't I can't imagine that this is how it works, honestly. I mean, you have, you know, game directors that are kind of supposed to, like, you know, manage the teams and, you know, kind of make sure that the overall vision of the game is going to go in the right direction and stuff like that. So there must be people that actually, you know, think about this. Okay, this season's going to have this. This season's going to have that. Oh, we're already in a planning stage for the season after that. And, you know, we're doing the concept arts and whatever. And, and you know, there's, there is kind of a, there must be, like, some kind of roadmap, you know, like, that they're working on. You know, they're thinking about the expansion, you know, they're doing this. We talked about, you know, the crafting system is going to get another layer maybe in the future or whatever. So, if, obviously, this is already preparing for the future. If they PTR and the item overhaul, I would just be calling you full of copium right now. Uh, they've kind of <laughs> had one recent W, and let's not get ahead of ourselves. They've mostly been deleting the content that they've been implementing so, in seasons up until this to, point. To that exact point, though, right? If 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 what we're trying to argue, like if what we're trying to argue, is almost like a scarcity of resource or an inability to like function at an efficiency level, to like, like, isn't it much more logical that like it would be harder to maintain these systems and keep them balanced and relevant as they add new content? Like, how do they both change the Blood Harvest and the Helltide and the Vault and the Dungeon, you know, Nightmare Dungeon, so it's still relevant? Like, wouldn't it, wouldn't it make more sense? Uh, that's like... You can give them a specific purpose, right? That's what it does in PoE. Like, you have a certain thing you can grind, a certain lead mechanic that gives you a certain thing that you can only get from that. Well, plus minus, yeah. But in general, you know, you could have like this Blood Harvest thing and you could have like a leftover from the Blood Harvest season where, you know, you can still get like a mini vampire power for your character so they can grind out and, you know, progress something. Like you talked about Torchlight, right? Torchlight, every one hour, there's like a new system they unlock from the previous season and just like layers power on power. I mean, I don't really want that, you know, to, to like a crazy degree, but, you know, every season in, implementing like some kind of like 5% power creep because of extra season stuff from the previous season that you can still grind out wouldn't necessarily be such a thing. Is that such a bad thing? And this is kind of like how PoE does it. It's kind of like, okay, Torsha does it like 50% per season. <laughs> They're going way overboard. But, you know, there is, it's kind of like that progression in PoE, right? Where, okay, now you have the synthesized implicits and now you have 
uh, the the catalysts on your jewelry and you know now we have this now we have that now we have like a new way of crafting certain item and kind of like every season there's like something like it doesn't have to be like layer on layer on layer on layer but as crypt described i totally agree the game has been extremely empty and it, it still doesn't have all that much they just made a much better job of making the existing stuff more interesting and bringing back all things should happen and in my opinion i think this will happen once they have a, a large enough base of you know themes to go with and you know make content out of it it's just kind of strange that they're not like immediately keeping them in the game i also advocated for like okay keep malfas around keep vaults around make them like a rare drop and you know if you actually finish a vault without getting hit too much by the traps you know make it like a you know hit dodging the fucking traps in the vault sucks and everyone hated it but if you do it if you do it like once if you do it like every single run but if you do it like once every five hours you get like one sigil of a vault yeah, I would, I would like to play that carefully and, you know, try to get to the end and only take, like, three hits and try to open all the chests if I do that right. I think that would be fine. Yeah, and why not? Yeah, make it like, very rewarding, a rare drop. There you go. My, so, my, my, sorry, so, like, my, my argument isn't that this thing shouldn't happen. I, I'd like to point to how many patch notes, how many patches rolled out, fine-tuning Nightmare Dungeons until anybody even enjoyed, like, playing them. And I think it could be reasonable. This could be me licking the boot a little bit too much. It could be reasonable saying, let's get a foundational game under our feet. And then we can actually have like the resources and time to keep these things evergreen in the game and have them in. You know, it's like we, we saw a nightmare dungeon change every week. It felt like when the game first released. And it's like if vaults have to stay in, they also have to get rebalanced. Right. They're like that. That's that's my only point. Where it goes like, why would they not do this? It's like, well, sometimes there is an inf there there isn't an infinite number of hours that people can work on a thing, right? But the other thing is also that if you do something like I said, where they get like a rare sigil drop for nightmare vault every five hours, you don't have to like omega balance them that much, you know. And they could give you like a special reward, like if you talked about maybe tempering reset stuff, you know, why why don't you do the vault and if you're successfully complete and you get like temper reset material or something, right? It could be something kind of small that you don't even. T technically it doesn't even constitute a power upgrade but something cool that you can get from that and you can target farm it if you really want to unbreak your item or something but the really the really important part here that that woody did correctly uh, identify about how poe does things is the poe power level things they are like five percent they may be maybe ten percent if you get like some like crazy point one percent version of something those are those are the versions of the league mechanics that they keep in the game, and and Diablo could absolutely do the same thing. They're just not really doing it. Like the like they put the vampire powers back in the game, just like one of them. I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, it's not gonna work with my character. And that's it. That's like that's that's kind of insane. That that's that's the only remnant of vampire powers. I guess yeah, now so we have hell tied, so it... I'm not going to use. So I don't know. So if I was if I was working at Blizzard and I'm making a template for the entire process of a seasonal theme, right? So you have the season and you know, we design it a certain way and it introduces a pet with ten levels of power and whatever, thirty different choices. We watch players play it, we get we gather some data, and it's probably completely unreasonable to think that already in the next league or in the next season that we'll have it you know fine-tuned to implement there but as part of the seasonal process it's like the post-season part of it okay what did people really like about this and what worked here and then maybe in the next season or the season after that whenever the hell it's ready as it's already been talked about multiple times you implement it in a nerf state we, we can't get 50%, we can't get the full power every time, all the time, or it's going to be terrible. you got to nerf it down tremendously. But one thing that, it, it, part of it is the events that we've been talking about. Oh, let us run a vault, let us do this. I'm not sure that the, as Woody said, I'm not sure that the tweaking on that needs to be so precise if it's more of a rare thing. But the thing for me is... Uh, Partly to what Crip said, it's like, first of all, there has to be something in here that's useful for me. And as a player, I want something to work on. Don't just put the vampire power on a ring and then say, go kill this boss if you want that ring. You've thrown away 98% of the season there. 
maybe you simplify the whole process to what macro said. What macro said is important. A lot of people feel that POE is far too bloated. So you need to nerf it and you need to simplify it, but you need to not abandon the whole progression system. And then it, it, I don't, I don't imagine that is being easy, but I imagine it's a hell of a lot easier than the designing the season theme in the first place. I think the value spent in like a post-production for a season and then re-implementing it like that, after a year or so, you would have, you know, a couple of different systems that you can work on that might actually be fun if that time was spent. That seems very valuable to me and would work long term. Yeah, I, I mean, do I think that them coming they, back. They give it more attention. Sorry, it like feeds into something? like a, a, yeah, it like feeds into like the, the, the one issue that I do have, you know, like, you know, just like Cripsite, it came back as an aspect. It's not good for my build. I don't care about this. You know, I, I, I don't know if you all have tried to fit in all the cool aspects to your build recently, but with the unique items that you want to use and the uber uniques and the aspects that you have, it's like so much, so much less room to actually like make decisions that I feel like are unique. And every time it just comes back as aspects, it's like, that is very cool. I don't know what you want me to do with that because I can't fit that onto my build. Not even that I wouldn't want to. I just physically can't fit it onto my build. So I definitely think that they need to come up with a better option. And I'm definitely not opposed to the idea of keeping it. Like, I would much rather run Nightmare Dungeon vaults as opposed to Nightmare Dungeons until the cows come home. Like, I can go kill uber bosses if I want the boss exchange. Not to, not to crap on Woody's desire to kill Tomb Lord for 12 hours. Or hey. Maybe Blood Bishop. He's pretty cool too. But like it, They need to double I'm, down I, on Tomb Lord. They need a Tomb Lord <laughs> level, like a cow level where every monster is Tomb Lord. We need Uber Tomb Lord in the expansion. We need color palette swap tomb lord. So he does different damage. If you get purple tomb lord, watch out. You need Shadow Res. The but, only color in Diablo games is red macro. We covered this earlier. Well, purple is basically just red and blue. So, you know, that's I think that's within the realm. No, I like I I I do get it. It, it. it is a very interesting choice to be like, all right, we have this cool thing, take it out. I feel like a lot of player base was asking for that, whether or not they were correct and that would lead to a better gameplay experience for them. I'm not confused that it's happening, uh, but I definitely agree that like they can't just keep adding in new uniques and aspects because if you're also going to add them every season until you're going to give me a whole other character just to like or like a Kanai's cube or something, I don't know where you want me to put these things, but yeah. Yeah, I also agree. Like, you know, the game is already starting to get a bit saturated when it comes to aspects. Okay, they couldn't give us, like, you know, some other ways of, like, adding some generic damage multiplier through a condition or something here and there. And it's kind of like, okay. Yeah, there's, like, some interesting stuff here and there. Like, you know, the Hectic Power, for example, is kind of like a game changer for some builds or so. And, like, there are some, like, gems that they put in there over time. But in the grand scheme of things, legendary powers are kind of, like, in a good spot, I guess, right? And uniques are also, okay. Some more cool build defining stuff is nice, you know, what they've done with like the fireball thing, that was like amazing. Or like the blight is gonna become like you know, a new thing now or something. So yeah, that is that's some cool stuff there. But yeah, just like using the same limited amount of slots that we have for all of the same stuff that bring back from seasons is kind of bad long term. And like as Rex said, it'll be nice to have like some progression system where we, that you can work on alongside the other progression systems that we already have with like the crafting, the items, the legendaries. So so some kind of like maybe mastery system, you know, that it unlocks at level 100, like post paragon progression kind of, and you know, you kept that out at some point and then you get like some extra powers that it brought back. Yeah, there could be many things, right? I, I mean, kind of like what you like... said earlier, which is just like, what if the progression was just that content was more valuable for you? And that's the only like meta progression to it. We leave d dungeon vaults in, but now they have a chance to spawn a boss at the end and it drops more loot. So player isn't getting more power they're getting more ways to play the game that better fits or tailors to what they enjoy I mean, that, i'm that actually super like good, on that good tuning but i don't know that's <laughs> that's getting getting a bit tricky i would more put it like i don't know like what's what's the pit currency what are those things called you get very few of them right okay well ne they evolve in the game they're like nightmare dungeons and you get like 10 percent chance to get one of those stupid things at the end like something like that i think could easily work and that's like no dev time right it can be small but I think I think that's like the simplest solution where like, yeah, it's OK if this like content is super, super easy, because rather than like need to buff it up to be on equal par, it gets less cool meta progression stuff. So like, yeah, it's wicked, wicked easy. But like you really 
it, it, if you like doing it, you can go do it, but it's not going to get you the same amount of stuff as doing a Nightmare Dungeon. I'm like, I'm exciting myself over this concept. I should be a developer. How, where do I apply to Blizzard? I'll go get this for us. Uh, well, you're going to have to answer to upper management's design decisions at Blizzard, I believe. So. <laughs> Yeah, some people in chat also suggest like Paragon changes, like they add a Paragon board for the Millennium theme or the, the Vampiric theme that can be used by all classes. What about that? I mean, there there's so there's so many ways you could do it. it. Like, there's so many ways you could make this work. You could have, you can bring back the pet a little bit reimagined. Like the pet doesn't really do much. He's there, but. The pet can level up five times, and then every time you level up, you give them you get three choices. You get two percent movement speed, or three hundred armor, or whatever. And then at, whatever at level five, you spend the whole season playing with your pet, or you achieve a certain goal. You killed Uber Lilith. You cleared pit one hundred, and now the pet can equip one yellow item, and you get the yellow item stats. You know whatever, or you could do a paragon. There's so many ideas that you could do. Um, I mean, we could sit here and theorycraft a thousand ideas that would work, but <laughs> say anything, give us a progression system. The malignant hearts, you just put them on a ring. The the vampire powers, didn't they just, they just put them, they, again, there's no progression system. The pet hasn't even returned. I don't think anybody's upset about that. There's nothing to work on, man. All you do is grind to a hundred, put on yellows, and then now you get legendaries. You look for some greater affixes, and then you click an up button 12 times. Can you get, can, we need some other things to work on. I mean, to be fair, you know, actually like maxing out the character will take significantly longer than before now, right? With the tempering and master working, and there is actually a post 100 progression now compared to before. So I would, I would like probably just wait and see how it actually feels like. I think you can easily spend like 100 plus hours on just taking out a character now in season four and the full one build. So I think that's that's a good amount of hours to to put into a build to kind of like get to like the high end, and I guess we'll see from there in terms of like you know nothing to do. I mean, yep, combine. Uh, I I think they got like a lot of changes in general coming in for next season. I'm, I I I don't think there will be like like yeah, I'm not sure they're designing a game where you have something meaningful to do. Uh literally year round. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm not sure anyone's making that game. Like I don't even think PoE is that game. <laughs> maybe Ruthless and PoE is that game. Maybe. Maybe. PoE has had too much power creep, I guess for that. <laughs> so, but yeah, I I think I think there's kind of enough like time spent. I just I just wish they they'd have like a yeah, like the the whole the whole spirit of my my point is I just wish they had some kind of like building up of of content that they make in the game um just like do something with it and yeah it kind of blew my mind that like vaults are not not part of the game anymore i just don't i just don't understand that like why right like i just don't understand um so yeah maybe they're coming back in a mid-season patch uh, so we'll see i guess maybe they already yeah, have plans on a ring where you just get teleported into a vault <laughs> on a lucky hit chance <laughs> I mean, there is actually, I, I actually had some discussion with, with my chat, uh, like, earlier about, like, people like the vault, like, initially the vaults from Diablo 3, the goblin vaults, and, uh, you know, they, they would like this, like, new pinata kind of, like, mini thing that you can open sometimes, and I guess if, like, vaults go somewhere in that direction, that they would also, you know, make, like, a smaller mini dungeon, but, in, you know, like, at the end, you get, like, these crazy chests, and, you know, like, you know, if you, if you avoid X traps, then you get, like, a, a huge explosion, but you can only open it so often. Yeah, maybe they're gonna do that. Who knows? Uh, they're also missing like on the on the cool factor. Like, I don't know. Like they could bring back vaults and like one of the pieces at the end drops like holographic. You know? Yeah. Then you have like the the you like the foil the stuff. You mean doing doing vaults only? You want to know what's a big miss in the cool factor? And it's like. When when you um, hone your gear in Lost Ark, you, you get like a little tiny glow, and then eventually, when you like get it maxed out, you're like, you know, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Lost Ark character. You want to know what the difference is between 
a 12 masterwork sword and a zero masterwork sword? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. That is su that's such a miss, man. I don't understand. Yeah. It makes a big low like, gold like instead of visually? silver. I'm sorry, I could What? Sorry. Not I heard ha half of each of you. Sorry, so like literally like visually, like once it's Masterwork 12, it's not like it's not the Harbinger of Death, like Angel of Death sword. Is that what we're yeah, I mean, I mean, th there is actually like no change at all. And that was one of the coolest things about Lost Ark. I mean, you're working on it, you're working on it, going to the raids, you finally hit one extra level. It just makes the glow a little bit bigger. I mean, it's OK, like it doesn't have to be as cool as Lost Ark, but there's nothing. I mean, the way that they tried to get us excited about masterworking was your favorite macro, the animation of hitting it, which is the worst <laughs> thing ever. Instead of giving us a permanent cool cosmetic on our character for achieving this, I mean, it's going to be a major achievement for, some, for most casual players to even reach the pit, let alone masterwork something to level 12 and chew through it at RNG. And for that, they get nothing. Doesn't I mean it doesn't it doesn't make any sense visually? I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair point. I think this is like some some easy low hanging fruit there, right? That they could just use to make you feel better about what you're doing with a character. All right. Well, should we move on? I had like not really many more topics now. We've already been sitting here for like three hours, guys. So I guess we can also slowly move towards the end. Uh, I wanted to talk about the bosses. Like, I'm not sure if, how many of you have actually tried the, the new bosses. Have you been doing those, the two one bosses? We talked a bit about the visual clarity and Vashan and stuff, but in general, has anyone been trying them? Like, what do you I, think about them? I was going to try them, but I purposely skipped them. I was like, eh, I'll just try them on hardcore blind for content and probably die. So, oh yeah, boy. No <laughs> yeah. I, think... I hope you bring scrolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we got to have a really cool, I think we got to have a really, really cool experience, which was just us like blind trying out Grigor with like the four of us, Woody. I had an amazingly fun time just like getting stomped two or three times and being like, what do we do? Like, what's hat? Like, do we just need to get good? Is there like, can we swap an aspect? Can I go drink a different potion? Um, will it all get trivialized? Of course. Yeah. Of, like, yeah. Like we can't have a power fantasy in this game and not trivialize content. That's just like how video games work. It turns out the better you get at it, the easier it is, but just like going in and trying it on relatively poorly geared characters who managed to scrape together enough resources and then just doing it until we won. That was like, that was fun. I had a good time doing that. And I, I, I like how they've, uh, attacked it doesn't just one shot you it's a stacking debuff and if you keep screwing up then you're going to be the one team member who needs to get rezzed a thousand times and that just feels bad but it's also you know funny as hell for your friends who are playing with you yeah, i had a really really good time with the bosses i did that one i did varshan solo that was uh, challenging because i think his barrier is bugged um and i haven't tried the other ones yet mostly because i just hate the beast in the ice like fundamentally i dislike that fight but I had a really good time with them. Okay, and Rex hasn't tried them. And Crip, have you done them? I have not done any of the bosses other than what's awaiting at the end of the pit, which is basically a white mob with Summon Necro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess a Summon Necro, you probably don't have too much trouble. Yeah, but basically, like, one of the main mechanics that I've added, and I guess that kind of went unnoticed by most people, is that every of these tormented level 200 bosses, they have mechanics that if you get hit by them, you get a stack, and that is an exponentially stacking extra damage taken buff. And uh, basically, you can allow like, you know, one, two, maybe three mistakes, and then it's over for you. So um, you have to make sure that you dodge certain like very crucial mechanics. For example, uh, on Varshan, every time you miss the dance, you get a stack. And uh, like on, on Duriel, every time he hits you with like this, this spit, like these balls that he spits out or something, uh, you get a stack. Or on Grigor, every time you hit the, the lightning pillars, you get a stack and these kind of things. So this is, yeah, sorry to spoil it, Rax, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm taking notes here. Yeah, exactly. So you basically have to play around these stacks, and otherwise they're not actually dangerous. Like, they don't actually hurt very much. It's like kind of beefy boys, but you need to kind of like play around these mechanics like for like five minutes, ten minutes straight or something, and yeah, make sure that you don't get hit too much. And I personally actually kind of like that system a lot because, number one, it kind of like allows you to like learn the fight without getting like insta-stomped. 
and you know even going in the first time but of course you still have to learn the mechanics and learn how to avoid that properly i feel like some of them are a bit poorly tuned like lord zia is an absolute joke like he's literally just a pushover because the only way to get a stack there is like from this big hug that you have like seven seconds to dodge <laughs> so that's kind of a, a meme so they need to do some tweaking there but generally i found the system pretty interesting and um actually pretty cool to play around because it's like okay you know like okay i got like a, a stack or two very early on maybe i restart a fight and try to do it better until 50 percent until shit hits the fan especially in the diarrheal fight and diarrheal fight is is exactly like, it gets like more and more intense like every like you know 30 percent or something and the last phase is just like completely crazy where there's like ground effects everywhere and like she's hitting you around there's a spinning rotating beam coming for you you have to dodge everything and if you have too many stacks you will just fail so you kind of have to try to get to the last phase like without taking too many of those other hits basically and that was kind of cool so i think they did a pretty good design minus a bit of tuning being like off and of course we're gonna have like some crazy boss killer builds that will just like blast them down but i think as a general right. like milestone to reach for like you know okay i'm making my whatever you know incinerate sorg let's say and i actually try to take down these bosses with that build at some point you know after i've mastered the fights of course on, on actually better builds i think it will be kind of cool so I'm actually very much looking forward to that. I really enjoyed that in PoE as well, where you know we had like these these milestones, these Uber bosses, and I always loved taking every single one of my builds and kill all of the Ubers with them, no matter how terrible those bosses were. The and the bosses uh, like those builds were the bosses, and I think that's how it's gonna be in in the Outer Four as well. It's kind of like a you know have you done this with this build, and that's yes or no. That's that's awesome. I think. So. I really hate to be the party pooper here but in all reality it's going to probably be fairly high access content which means you're going to invite the hoda barb that's going to kill it in one second and the mechanics <laughs> are not going to matter they yeah are, i mean like outside I said, of like the, bugs they are the so tanky thing. you can't just one shot them actually they have like a, a billion to two billion hp so that's it's quite a lot of hp actually in solo so so like two hodas or... <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they are like the most exciting thing for me this this upcoming season is going to be the standardization of uh defensive stats i think that is like very big for the game but they're not really doing that for offensive stats <laughs> like yeah as, as long as barbarians have four weapons and as long as items exist that giga multiply your biggest hits with each other which is on multiple items right now. Like, yeah, in terms of like group content, that's just always kind of going to be that way. I, I I cannot imagine a world where that very hard boss doesn't get killed by Rob or equivalent in like one and a half seconds. Yeah, outside of bug like builds, that will not happen. Though. So, like, what? Like, I, I don't. I don't see that as a problem though, right? Like if people choose to cheapen their own experience of a thing and or are not interested in it, fine. Like I, I'm I'm not really here to like define how they play the game. But if you are just trying to say, like, did I do it on, you know, Twisting Blades Rogue? Can I go do it on like can I go do it on Companion Druid? That's a fun thing that like it is very um it's endemic to Diablo 2, where a lot of the things that people enjoy doing in that game is figuring out, can I make this very bad build do anything at all? And that's where the game gets its replayability from. People love playing trash builds just to see what it does. And the, and these bosses existing lets you do that. It, it lets you find out the puzzle of trivializing it. It also just lets you have like a pretty decent like progression gauge. Like, oh, I did it at level 80. Like, let's say it's, let's say it's hyper trivialized really early on. Oh, I did at level 80. Oh, I did at level 70. I did without capping my armor or like whatever. Um, you can't stop people from trivializing content, but you can at least make the content fun enough that if you're not seeking to trivialize it, it is it is a challenge. And I think that they have succeeded, at least in the in the two bosses that I've fought. I think I think a lot of it, I, I think a lot of it just comes down to bugs, right? Every single season, there are super overtuned mechanics or bugs in the game that are just letting builds hitting hit for many orders of magnitude beyond what they're supposed to. And until we get down most of these 
again, without reintroducing more with every patch, I think what Crips said is inevitable. Someone's going to find some build, some bug that's just going to destroy it. Or maybe just group play is just so strong in and of itself that the HP scaling is just its just really easy. I'm not sure. I would be shocked if that's not what happens. But I think the day that Blizzard can rein in a lot of these major bugs that are adding the zeros to the damages of these builds, I think that you know we'll have some actual boss fights to you know, to try our builds against. I, I just laugh whenever somebody tells me they killed Uber Lilith. It's like, well, did you kill her in the very beginning before, you know, without the shred build that hit her for 1 billion damage? Or did you kill her pretty much any time after that second week with either a party of four chain resing you or where you one shot her and did no mechanics? It's like, well, you did you really kill Uber Lilith? I guess literally, yes, metaphorically, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like uh our experience i remember like you were also try harding the lift just like it's me on launch right like you're also doing hundreds of attempts until we yeah, took I it down and that farm. feeling that you got from actually taking her down right i think at yeah. this point they're not really tackling the problem like is i forget what it's called but like as long as that item exists or you like more than double your damage if you create an overpower or some crap like as long as stuff like that exists, they're not trying to address the problem. Now, they have been nerfing it, and I guess Hoda is not necessarily like the best build or something like that. So you know, we have other stuff now. We have mini necros that are good on single target, right? So there is there is going to be good ways of taking down these ubers for people that really want to. Yeah, and I think the, another like, good. Sorry. Like the the mini necros are going to do like thirty times more damage, but. <laughs> But that's not even close to how fast, like a barb can kill Duriel, right? Like that's that's kind of what I'm trying trying to mention. Yeah, but and regardless of which build is the best one, time, I guess it doesn't really matter. Seem overpowered, but yeah, it's it's not it's not quite like that. As as long as like a character or two can kill the hardest boss in like five seconds, then yeah, whatever. But I I I don't know. Did I miss it? Are are they tackling things like that? I didn't really see that. Oh, uh, they are nerfing the Banishal Talisman, for example, and they have nerfed our power. Like, sorry, Hoda Tibalt's itself. Tibalt's will got nerfed. Tibalt's yeah. will. There were several things that kind of like hit, especially Hoda Bar, very hard in the nerfs, and it only does ninety million now instead of a billion. So <laughs> doesn't Tibalt's will have DR from close? What do you mean they're nerfing Tibalt's will? Yeah, Tibalt's will is not nerfed enough. That's for sure. Yeah, but that's another oh, okay. topic. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm literally not even using Tibalt's will anymore on Necro. It's just like not good enough. Yeah, but it has DR from close. I was gonna say, are you? Uh, that's a softcore mentality. I'll, I do anything <laughs> for DR. No, but basically, uh, another thing I wanted to get at for these bosses is also that there is not actually a reason to do them. You know, they're literally just there for challenge. There's like no extra loot. There's no special items they drop, and I think this is also kind of like a good way of making them as hard as you really want them to make them. And, you know, there's, like, no upside in doing the Tormented version over the normal version because they, they cost five times the amount of stuff, they give you five times the amount of loot, and, you know, there's, like, no special loot you can get from the, you know, gate cat by not being able to take them down. You know, it's literally just either a challenge or a more efficient use of your time to spend multiple, you know, boss summons at once, basically. And I think it's also pretty cool about them. It's just, like, the main problem that I have is, like, Okay, like I want to make a build. I want to try to take down all of the uber bosses with that build. You know, every build I do, it's just gonna be like you know the general baseline of you know me succeeding with a build, you know, or feeling like a failure. And then it's like, okay, I have to actually spend you know five times the amount of summon months now to actually summon a boss a single time in a solo environment where I could have done a rotation with other people. And that rotation, I would have summoned five times, and then other people would have summoned fifteen times. So I'm missing out on 15 boss kills of loot every single time I do one of these boss kills just to have like, you know, the, the satisfaction of taking it down or not on, on the build. And I think that's kind of like the, you know, just like solo versus group thing kind of just gets even worse now because now I kind of feel like I want to do them solo compared to before where, okay, I'm just going to find the bosses in a group, fine. You know, they're not challenging. I don't really have like satisfaction on killing them. But now I actually want to do that, but I feel like it's just it's such a huge waste of my time. And, you know, it takes actually hours to farm a single summon. And and they still 
I feel like they still need to address this group issue here that, um, you know, we had all the way through season two and season three that they still have not really changed where, you know, you can leech from other people, basically. I think it's impossible, right? It just needs to be solo cell found as an option. Like, I, I, I've i talked about this a lot. Like, how do you actually address the fact that playing together is more efficient while simultaneously not disincentivizing people to play together in this MMO of an RPG, right? Like, it has to be that there's a reason to play together and it has to be fun. And that inherently means that people who don't play together will be worse off. And the only way that you ameliorate that is with the solo cell found mode. And until they add that in, it's we just have to accept the fact that they're like, hey, sorry, single players, enjoy less. I don't think less. that solo cell found is really the solution here. And there are other ways to solve it, though. Like, you know, the That's thing true. is that most, like, even with solo cell found in a game, most players that mainly play solo will still not play solo cell found. Like, we see this in Diablo 3. Like, solo cell found is actually not like very much chosen game mode for how many players actually play mostly solo or entirely solo even. They just don't choose solo cell phone anyway because maybe they think, you know, at some point I might want to group up and do like a few runs with some guys or my friend or whatever, but they still 90% play solo anyway. So solo cell phone does not solve that issue of always feeling terrible when you go and do that boss alone. It's more like, why can't I just find like a more reasonable uh, ratio between, okay, for example, like the guy who summons the boss gets a bonus similar to like this actually they in, literally introduced this in this patch in the pdr where if you summon if you contribute to summoning the blood maiden you get extra loot from blood maiden or um similar to the pit like if you open the pit of the rune shots the part leader gets the most of the mats in fact in the pit it's like the opposite where it's the same amount of materials but they're split between the party but the guy opening gets the most which is you know, the extreme it's opposite like end. Such simple solutions, if you yeah. want to be fair about it. Like... It's 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 really it's actually stupid in the pit as well because that's the opposite extreme where it's actually completely disincentivizing group play. Whereas it's the bosses where if you don't do it in a group, you're always going to be stupid. So you know, why don't you just make something like okay, you get like you know, hundred percent for the guy who opens it, and like I don't know, a quarter for the rest. You know, and it would be like okay, it's still nice. You know, you do a rotation and you get a bit more. It's kind of like worth your time because you still have to, you know, spend some minutes summoning that boss, killing it, and so on. But it's not like, okay, four times more efficient and everyone who wants to do it solo just feels like they completed, wasted everything. I think what they need to do is bring back the real PvP that Diablo introduced <laughs> called Loot PvP. I think if you group specifically for a boss kill, it should only drop uh, one not four and then it's like open so if you have friends that need like a boss you can like help them get it basically and <laughs> yeah. uh otherwise i hope you're a fast clicker it's not enough drama in d4 you know <laughs> there, there's also just everybody pays their own fee right everybody pays the five times mats everybody gets loot so it's not strictly better but you can still be the person who carries and like you can still go buy a ton and just go hand them out to everybody, but it's not this multiplication of drops, right? Like that's ultimately like the biggest issue. It's it's a multiplication of drops per resource spent, and you can still get your Hoda Barb and you can even pay him a fee or whatever to like come do it for you, but you got to supply him the mat so that he can do it. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I I think that's pretty fair. It's I don't know. It's just it, I think yeah. It's let's fair. just identify that they're they're not really even trying to do the fair part now that's just kind of whatever 100 oh, yeah. yeah. but the question is where is that coming from with the pit like you know like for the pit is like the opposite of like group play enabling basically because not only do you spend you know together time in the pit but then you get the same loot for everyone shared between the players you know it's not like this guy gets their loot and doesn't get it but it's you know one pool of loot is basically what crypt is tried just without the pvp part you know the guy who opens gets the Good most, part. yeah, and then the the other guys leeching, they get uh they get you know less, but it's like say the same number, it's like the opposite. Like when you think about it, okay, like you know previously that was like this explanation for like the the way that bosses work is, yeah, this is like a you know MMO light and this is Blizzard. They like to do group play you know stuff and the games and like them are on the side of making group play better than solo. And I can understand all this this, this reasoning and, and it kind of makes sense. But it could be like you know less extreme. But then there's the pit, and the pit is exactly the opposite. It's like solo only. You never would do it in a group. <laughs> like 
<laughs> it's just like the opposite. So for like a, exactly the the concept of this discussion, I think the better solution is what Macro said to add SSF. The people like I understand SSF might not be the most popular choice, and that's fine. Like for me, it's not all about popularity, but the people who feel like the most impacted by the fact that group play benefits you when they never want to group, give them a mode to just play by themselves and achieve by themselves. And when you have leaderboards in the future, they can be compared against such players. When you're when you don't pick SSF, it's kind of you signing up for saying, well, there is group play in the game, and usually group play has some benefit here and there. Blizzard can do everything that they can try to do to try to balance it. But kind of this whole discussion that Woody's bringing up, like back and forth, this this mode is so overpowered for group, this mode is only for solo. It's so hard to balance that that I think the easier solution is make SSF for the people that love solo only, and they can play that. I think that's the easier solution. It's the solution that I would prefer. It's what I would pick personally. I don't know. I don't think that's like an easier solution compared to just balancing it out a little bit. Like, you know, we're not even talking about like a group meta versus a solo meta, like in uh, Diablo 3, right? Where you just have like support characters and they completely elevate, you know, like the power that they can achieve in a group and you go like many tiers higher and you get like 20 times the amount of XP than a solo player or something. It's not even that. It's just like, you go, you kill a boss together, and you get four times the amount of loot for the same materials. And, you know, the big part about killing a boss is not killing a boss, it's getting the materials. And this is this is just the point, the part that makes no sense, you know? The boss is the easy part, getting the materials is the hard part, but you multiply the materials just for partying up with others. And it's, it's just kind of like a stupid solution, I think. And as an effort not to really solve like it. I the group experience for Duriel, because you get to see if the barb crits or not on his overpower. I like to see how much DPS I do before they get their rotation together. Like one time I committed like a solid 5, 10 million damage before he bonked it, and I felt pretty good about myself there. Yeah, anyway, I mean, it seems like they are at least willing to try to balance our group and party play in some ways. As you've seen with like the recent addition with the pits and this weird material drops that I think also need to be adjusted in the opposite direction. I'm not just advocating make it everything solo the best mode possible, but, you know, I fi I'm fine with making groups better, but it's like, why does it work that way? You know, it's been two seasons of this now. We're heading into the third season of, you know, boss rotas, basically. And solo cell phone wouldn't even solve that issue necessarily because solo cell phone, like, I don't want to play completely solo cell phone. I still want to enjoy the trade, you know. I still want to, you know, do stuff with my friends sometimes. I still want to like actually acquire the idols at the same rate that other people acquire, or nearly the same rate. I'm fine with like taking some inefficiencies, but I don't want to like play solo cell phone and then farm 500 durials to get my ubers. Like, yeah, I'm gonna uninstall. You know, <laughs> like try doing that. Good luck. You know, like that is also not Wait, the solution. You're gonna uninstall? Can we get that in writing? <laughs> yeah, it's just it. like. With, with current drop rates, you know, like a solo cell phone, like a strictly solo cell phone player, not doing boss rotations, man. Good luck, dude. Like, you're not even talking about greater affixes on your Uber and X, right? So, <laughs> but okay, but if we think about that philosophically, though, so what you're saying is, if you implement solo cell found into Diablo Four, it's just extremely unfair, right? Which you're right, I agree with you. So, but. What's the problem there? Is the problem implementing solo cell found or is the problem the balance of Diablo 4? If we have Diablo 4 and we say implementing solo cell found would be so unfair that we can't play it, we have a major problem with the base design of the game, right? I, yeah, I, that's kind of the point I was trying to make. I think it's a major problem with the base design of the game because you have a lot of people that will even with SSF existing, will not choose SSF for various reasons. Either they're not aware, maybe they don't want to have that restriction, even if they always play solo, maybe they want to trade, you know, maybe they want to play with their friends on the weekend, but otherwise play solo. You know, there will be many people not doing SSF, and a lot of people just even hate doing boss rotations, you know, they just they don't want to sit in, in the Discord and try to find people for the boss rotation, and, you know, if you could at least somewhat viably do it solo, they would probably. 
it's just like so far disconnected from the solo player rewards or the group rewards that it, you know it doesn't make sense to do so so everyone just holds onto their stuff doesn't kill the bosses wait for waits patiently until they can do a, a rotation then they get scanned because the guy just quits before opening and you know it's just like a terrible experience i think for everyone and yeah, the solo so server mode does not solve it the, the problem is the imbalance yeah so i i agree with you that solo self found alone does not does not solve the problem right there's a problem inherently in how the bosses work and how solo and group play works. I'm not arguing. I, I agree with you that they would need to make additional changes to how it's dispersed. But I think also part of it is, as you said, it's the whole process of grouping that people hate as well. Some people don't have any friends. Some people don't want to go on a discord and, and find people. And yeah, it, if you did balance it in the regular game, you could just play solo there. But I think a lot of people, like playing solo just for the prestige of it just to say i never grouped with anybody to say hey guess what all all of you go to durial and your hoda barb one shots the bar the boss i actually killed the boss you know what i mean so i think solo self found does give you more than just balancing the rewards gives you in the base game i think it does matter to a lot of people yeah, okay. I agree with that, and I definitely don't say don't make it solo self fun now because you know I've been I've been asking for solo self fun for a long time. But yeah, the reason to have solo self fun is mostly for that prestige thing, for mostly for competitive reasons. You know, the racing and in solo self fun, you know, all that kind of stuff. This is why solo self fun is good. It's not good because boss rotations are OP. You know, like they need to solve both at the same time. I think. It, I really think uh, you're missing a little bit with that statement. It's you're not wrong, but like. A lot of players want to play solo, and it's not it's not just like prestige exactly. They just want want it restricted as such. And when you have like crazy OP group based activities, then yeah, they either want to be seen that they're actually doing it by themselves, or yeah, uh, because they they don't really want to. Like if, if if there's no SSF mode, you have to do Durial with the group. A lot of people just won't want to, and the people that won't want to, they want to be in a different category, because yeah, if you're doing Durial outside of groups, you are in a different category, right? They're just not really recognized as such. It's it, it, as long as you have crazy unfair group play, people are gonna have to group. That's it. If if they want to be anywhere near the same level, yeah. Any other words on the SSF topic or the, the grouping topic, guys? <laughs> We've been talking about this for quite a while now. Well, it's the the real reason why we'll never get a solo cell found mode is because then when you're walking through Kyobushad, you won't see people's sick cosmetics, and then you won't want to like buy their cool portals and stuff. I mean, you that's can have the, a side by side SSF. Yeah, I mean, it could you could just still be in the same instance with someone in the, in the Kyoshad, right? And then you go out of Kyoshad, you're in like the, the world instance and you're on your own. Or even the, the open world could be, you know, you encounter yeah, you other could, players. You could have shared Helltide and stuff. Even. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. They don't have to make separate exactly. servers. The really broken stuff is the instance stuff. So, yeah. We just got 50% closer to getting SSF mode, guys. We proved that the shop will still work. <laughs> Halfway there. Yeah. Okay. More than well, halfway. Anyway, so I think we can also like slowly wrap it up here, guys. We've been sitting here for a while. Um, one last topic, like a, a short one, the season theme for next season. So, what do you guys think will happen? Because we have not really any preview of it. We have some clues, but what do you guys think? I I I have no. I haven't looked at any of the leaks. I have no predictions at from what's going to happen but i can tell you how i'm going to interact with the season theme i'm going to look for every ounce of defense it can possibly give me i don't care about anything else i just want to know what kind of defense it can give me that's it i don't care about anything else okay so there's going to be like this new zone that you go in there to get the stuff and then the stuff's going to be like take 20 percent less damage or deal 50 percent more damage and then there's going to be this other thing where you can apply vulnerable because we have to fix that and break it with every season mechanic. 
and it's going to have a cool name. Which one are you going to take? The twenty, the DR, the twenty DR, the fifty damage? Uh, I don't know. Depends if the minions get it. I'll be I'll be slightly less nihilistic. Um, I actually think they've done a pretty good job with season stories and quest lines. You know, outside of the fact that sometimes when you go to click the stuff, it doesn't work. But like, I think the story of season three was pretty cool. I think the story of season two was pretty cool too, until they completely didn't deserve her like trying to turn on you. I think you should have like turned into a flesh eating vampire for a little bit, and she had to take you down. That would have been cool. Um, but obviously, I mean, like we've seen like the Iron Wolf stuff in the game we've seen you get wolf's reputation so i don't think they're breaking too far away from the mold mold the interesting part is that like one of the iron wolves is in the hell tide so it's content that's theoretically returning at least in part to the open world and i'm trying to figure out how they could possibly fit more stuff into the hell tide without absolutely like choking the life out of it so i am hoping it's something that isn't just purple hell tide and that we we'll probably get either some alternative to like doing whispers, doing nightmare dungeons or like some parallel progression. That is like the pit light. And then I, I like the reputation board kind of, I don't like going to a vendor and like buying stuff, but I do like, Oh, you've done enough of the, the open world, whatever stuff you can go get your, your cash. And I hope mostly that they've just learned from their past mistakes, which is like the final cash of season two gave you 10,000 blood when you already had 50,000 blood. And instead actually gives you like valuable stuff. Like, oh, I opened up my last cache and I got an entire inventory worth of whatever materials or something like that. It's going to have but sacred I, items in it. I, all right, don't put that, don't put that badness on me. I would really prefer if like I opened up a cache and the items made sense for my progression point. No, but I, I, I unironically think that they've done like a pretty good job of making what you're doing in the season make sense inside of the story. And I appreciate that about it because it could just be like throwaway nonsense stuff, uh, but it will just be like pick your poison of power. And I hope it's more so utility and mobility as opposed to power and defense, because then I could, I don't know, move faster than max run speed on the Necromancer for once. That'd be pretty cool. And the final boss will be Uber Tomb Lord. So like a great season to have. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> but OK, OK, real quick, real quick tinfoil hat. Because we're getting Iron Wolves, and Iron Wolves are very specifically the mercenary groups in Act 3 in Kurost, um, uh, the jungle outside of uh, the Travancall and the Durance of Hate where Mephisto is. And obviously this, uh, this season will bring us to August, where we should theoretically be getting information on the expansion that's coming out late into 2024. It would be cool if this season was a T-ball up for at least some of the story that we should expect to see when we inevitably go try and get Mephisto's soul stone back from super corrupted, whatever her name was, I don't remember. The most forgettable now, character in this story. Now, hold up, hold up. If it's like a prequel to that, and if the Mephisto mechanic still has Tomb Lords in it, what if they do that through a Tomb Lord segue so everyone's happy? If Tomb Lord I'm isn't in it, the season's gonna that. be an L. Big L, no Tomb Lord, no Blood Bishop. Where was my Sea Hag? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, yeah, it sounds interesting. I'm definitely excited for the reveal of the season theme, and then also what they're going to see. I guess, yeah, during, during season four, at some point, we should get probably something about the expansion, right? So that's going to be exciting. All right, so one last question for everyone. What are you going to do until May 14th, now that... No one is ever going to look into Diablo 3, uh, Diablo 4 again for the next month. So, what's the plan? Grinding the gauntlet, baby. Of course, got to get my number. No. Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to log in. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, like, uh, like to be a little bit too real, making a lot of speculative <sighs> stuff, you know, at, like working on theoretical updates so I can like save myself some time. But I'm just excited to play the, uh, I found out I had purchased Final Fantasy 7, the first remake on Steam, and I just completely forgot. And I love Final Fantasy VII, so I think I'm going to play through the campaign there. And then that hopefully gets me all the way up till May. And if it doesn't, Heroes of Might Magic 3, baby. We're going pro. <laughs> God, I love that game. Uh, play a little D3 on Friday. Always got to jump in. We we got to gotta mess around. And I think we have no rest for the Wicked, the Dark Souls ARPG next week, or the following week, right? So I'll probably mess around with that. Soonish, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's so week or so away or whatever it is and then 
Uh, probably if we beat that, then probably probably go back to PoE. I heard they updated the league and it's fun. So log in. Well, they updated the league. Okay, they updated the league, but it's not fun. All right. Well, well, then we won't have any fun on PoE until D four. They still have this thing where like. It, unless you're re micromanaging the map when you put it in, something just does like five times damage. So yeah, unless I have, unless your character is that over tanky, you you just have to just really micromanage it in that window thingy again. Well, I have five hardcore characters dead and zero alive so far this league. So I right. I know what so you mean. That shouldn't that sh that's not fixed yet then. <laughs> All right, and Crip, what's your plan? Uh, well, I'm kind of just like chilling the Pewee League, but I'm not like uh, super hooked or whatever. Uh, usually, I'm much more interested in Pewee League. It's a bit of a bust this time, but um, yeah, we get like a big Hearthstone update. We got like Hearthstone duos, uh, I think on Tuesday. Oh, that uh, sounds pretty cool, where actually. Where you like play battlegrounds and you like trade cards with the person you teamed up with. Like team battlegrounds, so yeah, I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm all right. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be sweating out until the next uh, D four season. That's okay. I don't think you should ever plan to play only Diablo year round. There's like <laughs> I think I think Poe overall is the most complete game I've ever played, and I still can't imagine playing it literally year round. Um, so yeah, but card guys are fine, I guess. What's that? Card games are fine all year round. Card games. Oh, yes. um, well, I don't really play that fully year round, but yes, more so. <laughs> They're a lot more chill and social. It's not so much about the game. It's like what you experience and how you experience it. And yeah, card games are just like a lot more chill. You just do, you can do a lot more while you're just playing. All right. Yeah, and for me, I guess people might be wondering, like, yeah, I'm also planning, I was actually planning to play some PoE now between PTR and D3, but I, I will probably do some tomorrow and then maybe a bit after D3. And then I guess Torchlight is coming, no rest for the wickets. Yeah, a bit of uh, time off, actually, in late April, and then I guess it's getting ready for the season, so that's kind of my plan. Time off? God, what's yeah. that like? I mean, it's been a while for me as well, you know, last time was like half a year ago or so, so... <laughs> Yeah, you know Rax, you should really consider it at some point, I guess. <laughs> I realized something, Rax. I think we, I think we both started streaming around the same time, because right around when you had put out your, you know, I've been doing it for five years straight. Let's talk about my timeline. I got my first uh, sixty-month sub, and I went, "Wait a minute, hold on." <laughs> Did Rax Dude. and I start streaming at the same time? That's actually wild. Do you, do you know what day you started? Um, I would, I would have to go back and look it up. Um, because I, I kind of started doing it while I was working a full time job, so it was yeah. whenever I wanted. But to you can you can check your own that. sub duration now, like to your own oh, channel. You are sub to your own channel. It should be the, the day March. when you got it. No, that's that's a new feature. Really? It's okay. only been there for like eight years. <laughs> um, I, I've I've been exactly sixty one months, so I'm I'm not sure how many days that is, but if it's exactly years, to the day, then you started streaming three days before me. Oh, interesting. Let's go. I'm your dad. What's up? Rax, they have it marked on like every month on your calendar. Or, like this is another month. Like <laughs> No, I just know I started March 13th, 2019. So three days from now would be 61, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, in any case, I think we are we are over this uh with, with our topics here. So um it was a it was a great podcast actually. So thank you all for joining. Thanks, Rax, as well, for like doing the initial yeah, invitations and setting this up a bit and sure. yeah i mean hopefully i'm gonna see everyone blasting i guess i mean macro racks of course but also crip i guess um, it's gonna be nice to see like you know how it's actually gonna play out once the season comes and um yeah if you have any other final words you want to say then feel free to do that like where can people find you or anything else and then you wrap it up all right well thanks for watching guys <laughs> for listening in this has been quite a ride uh i honestly am pretty blown away that we've been at this for four hours i think we probably need a little bit better time management for, yeah for we, we do i guess but we also got kind of like stuck in the necro discussion and that's to, to a big degree uh, your fault crib uh, <laughs>
You know, I know one thing that I think was interesting about this podcast over some of the other ones is we were actually arguing and battling a lot more on topics, which people say is a lot more fun than everyone just saying, oh, I think we should have more Tomb Lord. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And they're like, that's boring, right? So at least we were arguing about stuff. That's good. Yeah, it was a lot of back and forth. I agree. It was cool. All right, Marco, you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, as my sign out, uh, just because like, I, I also agree, like we, we I think we took this like very seriously. I'm very, very excited for this upcoming season. I think they've hit a lot of the things out of the park. Um, and I think that we the fact that we can be so critical is like a good sign, right? Like we have things to be critical about as opposed to just like D4 bad and us all kind of nodding our heads along. But yeah, I'm if you know me, you know me. My name's impossible to spell, so I'm not gonna try it. I'm this guy. You you probably figured it out. Uh, March 19th. 2019 Rex. I just got the date. Okay, so I'm March 13th, so I'm your daddy. Damn it. Rex is my dad again. Well, that makes more sense. That's fine. Yeah, I was going to say. No, I'm just kidding. All right. In that case, uh, thank you all for watching on all of the different channels uh, Twitch, YouTube. Uh, I know we also had some some people streaming. Everyone was streaming, actually, right? So hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys Crip, next time. you're still going, right? Uh, yeah, I'll probably stream for a bit. All right, perfect. All right, let's get him, boys. Get him. Get him. I'll be to okay. send various <laughs> shots. Cheers. Yo. Later, okay. guys. Good night, guys. Thanks, guys.